Hello all. Due to a crushing work schedule, Kyle wasn't able to do the sound engineering for us this week. And unfortunately, we didn't learn about this until the last minute, so this episode is basically the unedited, raw audio of us talking. We apologize in advance for the lowered quality. But you said you and Rachel were talking about something before you got here? Or is that like for the podcast and we should wait? Um, I can mention it and if it sounds interesting enough, we can talk about it. Mm. I don't know if I could do a resistant justice, but I at least enjoyed hearing about it for a while. Mm-hmm. Um, should that Facebook post that was something defending the use of inclusive terms for people as opposed to exclusive terms when you're like, right, right. oh, uh, like all guys are shit or all white people suck or something. Right. Yeah. Oh, I um, saw that post. Yeah. Mm. And so, uh, putting my cards on the table, I agree to the Enosh's response that like, Painting with a broad brush like that isn't probably the path to success for various reasons, um, or nor is it moral, probably. Mm. Um, and I think her perspective was that if you don't, if you paint with a, if you say some people rather than all, or mm. just don't even qualify, therefore implying all, mm-hmm. then like it's easy for people to dismiss it and be like, oh, they're not talking about me. Okay. Um, Which is true. I've actually seen that sort of behavior from people. And I'm sure that we can... Uh, and you know what? I'm okay with that. No, you're not. I, I'm okay with people saying that is probably isn't about me if it's probably not about them. And if it is about them, then maybe someone should tell them. Why? Because then they know it's not about them. If, they, if, you look at, if you look at a thing and it says, like, all women who wear black are blah. Hey, hold on. Do you guys want to do this on the podcast? Because this sounds interesting. Because okay. sure. I feel like I'm learning. <laughs> uh, I, no, okay. Well, I'll include it. Starting at 17-minute mark. Okay. All right. Make a quick note. Text me with 17 minutes or something. You got it. Cool. All right. Go on. Okay. So say, for example, that I, as a white woman wearing a black dress, mm-hmm. see something and it says, all white women who wear black dresses are blah. Mm-hmm. I can look at gay. myself. or Yeah, or whatever. I am gay, so. Uh. Yeah, all right. But, um something pejorative or something unpleasant or something. Mm -hmm. Um, I can look at that and say, am I this way? And if I self-reflect and say, no, that's not me. And I can be like, that's a generalization. It probably is talking about these other people who do have this particular trait Mm -hmm. that do behave in this particular way. And I can go on about my day because I know it's not about me. How often do you got to hear all women are naggy bitches before it starts to really weigh down on you instead of being like, oh, am I a naggy bitch? No, I'm not, so I can go about my day. Like, zero times I don't have a problem with people saying that. It just tells me what kind of person they are. Okay. So I I do have a problem with people saying things like that sometimes. Yeah, but I have my own so- sense of self-identity where I'm like, okay, this is who I am. This is how I perceive myself. I can self-reflect and be like, this is obviously not about me. Mm-hmm. So, but, but if you're, It are, still affects you. But, but hold on. But if you're assessing that it's not about you... Uh, wouldn't you be doing that even if it said some women are naggy bitches? I don't like the example, but running with it. Yeah. If it's some or all, like, I think the distinction is, are you implying that it's everybody or not? So we can keep running with that example or we can run mm. with other ones. But well, like, okay, so real ones that I've seen are like, there's uh, a rape uh, problem with men or something. A or real men, one men are I've, rapists. Yes, yeah. I, I, that, is, that is a very big one. I've written about that one before. A similar one is black people are criminals. Right. And what... Are now black people supposed to say, am I a criminal? No, I'm not. So I just go along. That's actually something that's quite different. How so? Um, How the reason white it's people... different mm-hmm. is it's punching down, not punching up. I am sorry. Okay. So... I, I am familiar with the concept, but please explain it. Okay. Out loud. So when... I don't think I am. So oh, Okay. Okay. Uh, So when you say punch up, don't punch down, Mm -hmm. you're talking about challenge people in power with privilege instead of picking on people who don't have power and privilege and who are usually um, criminalized or otherwise, you know, Mm -hmm. put in a place where they suffer for that place. Why are we punching people at all? It's a phrase. (laughs) But it seems to be chosen that way for a reason, right? Yeah, Yeah, because I can say challenge power, but don't hurt people who have less power. Challenge power is different. Because but that's basically what it means. No, I think punch up is much more appropriate than challenge power because then that points out that some people are powerless. There's a lot of white people that are living in poverty. Mm-hmm. And if you punch up by saying all white people are shit, you're really punching down on a lot of white people. 
No, because if you say all pe- all white people are shit, mm-hmm. because and I, I hate this example, but I'll run with it, mm-hmm. because they tend to treat black people poorly, mm-hmm. or all p- white people are shit because they have racism problems. Mm-hmm. That's not saying, that's not picking on poor white people because they're poor. Oh, but it is. No, it's not. Well, not because they're poor, but it's picking on poor white people. Yes, because they still have privilege, and that privilege involves their status as white. I understand there is some privilege for being white, yet if you go to one of these rural areas where people are living in poverty and tell them that they're privileged, they will be very upset at you, and rightly so, in my opinion. No, because the reason they have privilege is not because it's not like a monetary thing, like, oh, every white person is rich or whatever. Yeah. You guys don't it's... get monthly checks? <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, oh, I'll keep that to myself. I, I, that's because I'm a woman. Um, <laughs> well, you, get, you, get, you get a fraction of a check, right? Oh, right so yeah, I don't get yeah. monthly checks because I'm an immigrant. So, oh, oh okay, that, that not makes sense. Okay. <laughs> um, wow, but if you okay, you take a poor white person and a poor person of color, mm-hmm. and you put them in the same exact circumstances in the same exact city, mm-hmm. who's going to be less privileged? I think that depends a lot on their situation. No. Okay. Well, well if, yes, we're, sti- yes, if we're actually, stipulating yes, that they're identical. Yes. Then, then yeah, you can say all else being equal, the black person's worse off. Because, yeah. So I think then the question is like, are you encompassing people in a better, like you could say, man, talking about race, race stuff makes it dicey. Yeah, but it do, you want to, do you want to talk about sex stuff instead? Well, like we could say all dicey. men have privilege because there is male privilege as yes. well. Yeah. And if you take a and, man- and yet try telling that to a man who is suicidal because of toxic masculinity and the culture that expects him to be in certain ways. And tell him that he's got male privilege, and see how happy he's about he is about that. I think you're talk- you're confusing feelings and circumstance. Okay. Um, because you say tell this like for example take take your example of tell this white cis male who does have problems rising from toxic masculinity, mm-hmm. and say fuck you in your privilege yeah mm-hmm. it's going to hurt their feelings but it's not going to change the fact that they do have privilege they do make more than women they do have more power than people of color statistically white men do yes I, if you're reducing an individual person to statistics again then you might as well say that the black person you know of there is a criminal since criminality is higher in the ba- black population it's different though because... I, there's a lot of reasons for it, yeah, and some many systemic reasons. But if all we're doing is looking at statistically, white people are more privileged, yeah. But it doesn't. It's a. It's not something that hurts them. Oh yes, it does. Being reduced to statistics. No, privilege doesn't hurt people. Oh, privilege. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. I thought you were talking about being reduced to yeah, a number. Yeah. Sorry. My face was like. <laughs> okay. But um, no. If you're talking about privilege and you're saying this person has more privilege than this other person. You're talking about this person's societal status and the benefits they get from it Mm -hmm. are different than this person's. Mm -hmm. And it's not saying, you know, it's not talking about, well, it is. Let me me rephrase that. It's not causing them damage. So as a man, I am assumed to be more violent than you. Yes. You don't think that causes me any damage in relationship to you in certain situations? It, It actually, okay. So statistically... Mm-hmm. Men are more violent than women. Exactly. But it's something that affects how you live your life and how I live my life. Mm-hmm. But if I say all men are violent, yes. I'm talking from a place of I am afraid mm-hmm. of hen- of dealing with men because men are violent. I, if you were to phrase it that way, that'd be wonderful. And that is something that builds compassion and allows people to relate to each other. If on the other hand you say all men are violent, I say, well... That's great. That's one of the reasons I hate being a man. Okay. So, but the difference is, is you're asking, you're asking a lot of emotional labor from people. All I'm asking is for people not to reduce an individual to the stereotypes of their group. Yes. But when someone says, which I thought was a progressive ideal. Yes. But when I'm, when I, for example, if I post on Facebook and I say all men are violent and like post a meme or something that underscores my thought process there. Mm Mm-hmm. I'm not saying any Brodsky is a violent motherfucker. <laughs> hold on. Wait. Hold, let me think. Just to logical tautologies. Inyash is a man. Uh-huh. All men. Uh-huh. Therefore, Inyash. Yes. That's that's how it's read, I think. I mean, that's like that's, fourth grade logic. I think that only the two people in this room read it this way, because I definitely don't. Well, it is simple, basic logic. If you say all something is X, and someone is part of that something, then they also are X. It, the classic example of all men are mortal, Socrates is a man, draw your own conclusion. 
it and I think going back to the emotional labor thing because I got sidetracked and forgot about that. So I think this ties into it. Mm-hmm. So bear with me. Okay. When you're asking people who have been victimized, when you're asking people who don't have privilege, when you're asking people who whose circumstances have caused them to have pain or suffering because of something they are. Mm-hmm. When you say, I need you to do all this emotional labor and qualify everything so my own feelings don't get hurt. Mm-hmm. That's a shitty thing to do. You don't think that men have ever, or white people, or you don't think anyone in the world has ever not experienced pain and suffering because of what they are? I think it depends. Mike Pence. Is he representative Is he representative of the overwhelming majority of people in the United States? He got voted in. That doesn't mean... <laughs> no. Well, for... No one votes for the vice president. I'm joking. I'm totally joking. So no one votes for the vice president, and people don't vote for people that are representative of them as people. Yeah, no, I I was completely joking on that. I'm sorry. No, so I mean, (laughs) uh, like, I just, I don't want to grab a non-central example and say, well, look at this person. Mm -hmm. And like, that person could be be one in 300 million, right? So, uh, I mean, I think we're talking about like broad strokes. Also, can I get a clarification point? Yeah. Um, I have come to understand a bit of what privilege means mm-hmm. uh i it might be clear that i'm kind of an idiot um but you get you're talking about it like it's a number between one and a hundred but i don't think that that's the best way to think about it so like you have so much privilege and then maybe you could uh, to me it looks like it's like a however many boxes you want to put people into they get points per box mm-hmm. of privilege or anti-privilege or however you want to measure it mm-hmm. And so maybe you could average out those and say, look, we've averaged out these 60 boxes. You would look like you have two, you know, uh, let's say 67 total privilege points out of 100. (laughs) Um, Now, I'm being simplistic, but like to say that this person has more privilege than this person just by looking at one factor doesn't seem like enough. Okay. No, it's not like a numbers game. But like you can, if you're if you're saying one has more than another, then there's not there's a comparison game. No, there is a comparison game. like, Like, for example, I as a woman have less privilege than you as a man. Because, in some situations. Because I get interrupted when I'm trying to talk about things. Okay. I've been interrupted on the show before, too. I know. I, I'm, 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 making, I'm making a really so. snarky point. Okay. I'm making a very snarky point. Right. But that happens because I'm a woman. I don't get interrupted. But, uh, men don't get interrupted nearly as much as women get interrupted. I have seen that. Um, that is privilege. That's privilege in case in point is men have more. And I don't, I don't really know if it's a respect thing, but I want to say respect. Men respect other men more. In order to give them the time and the space to express their ideas. Or we're equally afraid as men, of men in that the same reason that women allow themselves to be interrupted is the same reason that men don't interrupt other men is because we're afraid we're going to get our asses kicked because Enosh is bigger than me. So um, <laughs> no, I think that actually is kind of a poorly, poor way to say stuff. And that was a somewhat yeah. flippant response. Yeah, we, yeah. It's, it's you guys flippant. can't see the smiles in the room. So uh, I also scratch want, that. want you to ask how much privilege does the man have over the woman or vice versa? when dealing with a police officer or in a court of law because women get preferential treatment in those cases they get lesser sentences for the same crimes their uh storage facilities or jails or whatever aren't as bad storage facilities yeah i i'm, I'm not a big fan of prisons okay yeah i just hadn't heard that phrase before so okay yeah <laughs> high five thank you they uh they get help from officers as opposed to get um aggression from officers much more often but the reason why is because they're perceived as helpless and that's not a privilege thing. That's, that's like a bad stereotype. It's like saying, oh, you're helpless. You couldn't help yourself. You know, we're going to let you off easy because you're just a stupid woman. You know I, what? I'd be willing to take that societal uh-huh. judgment if it, led to le- if it led to less prison time. Yeah. But I feel like I could have years of less rape. But and... it doesn't. Because say, for example, I'm 34 mm-hmm. and I get sent to prison for whatever reason. Um, and, but I get a lesser sentence than a man. That doesn't mean that I haven't spent the rest of my life dealing with the effects of privilege on me. It's like saying it's not a get out of jail free card. It's a, uh, this is the circumstances of my life. And I have to deal with not only the, oh yeah, I get out of jail free, but I have to deal with men interrupting me. I have to deal with getting paid less. I have to deal with every single thing, the fashion standards, everything that comes with being a woman that makes me have less privilege than a man. You aren't expected to violently defend yourself. You aren't uh, assumed to be a sexual predator. You aren't assumed to be a child molester if anyone ever sees you with a child other than your own. There's a lot of privileges that also come with being female. There's a difference between privileges and privilege, though. All right, can I... uh, And those, I would argue those aren't privileges. Sorry, Stephen, go ahead. No, no, you're good. I kind of want to just, if you don't mind, completely derail that line of conversation, or at least ask how useful it is. Mm Mm-hmm. I I'm, guess I'm right. Trying... We're getting into the oppression Olympics here, and that's always well, no, no. never useful. I mean, that might be that might come up, but I want the point of 
kind of the episode to be more about like fruitful conversations. So if there's yeah. if it's not going somewhere, we should right. Well, We're the, talking in circles now. Well, no, no. I mean, it, it might not be a circle. I guess just at least take a meta step back and say, is this the kind of approach that will lead to a good conversation, or yeah. is this actually getting us anywhere? So yeah. is it going in circles? So yeah, like that's a good point. The like raising up data points like well this person's more privileged here this person's more privileged here so like i am factually curious as to whether or not like uh you know a black person who came from you know two ivy league graduate parents and was born with you know all of the the societal benefits of being in a nice neighborhood and with a Barack retirement Obama? fund um no uh I, i'm joking yeah sorry um uh, uh i don't think um were his parents Ivy League grads? I thought that he was had no. Nice, I don't think so. Yeah, he had I nicely humble he, origins. Yeah, um, he was an Ivy League grad. Yeah, um, but yeah, so maybe his kids mm -hmm. are Barack Obama's kids less privileged than uh, you know somebody with some some mm -hmm. white kid with, our with kids. If we were to have kids, sure, I would argue yes that they're less privileged or more privileged. Less. Yeah. Okay. Good. So that's that's what I was thinking. Yeah. So that's that's where I was getting at that it wasn't just like a sliding scale based off of one factor. Mm -hmm. It's an amalgamation of a number of factors. Yes. Exactly. Okay. I yeah. think anyone who argues that Barack Obama's kids are less privileged than my kids would be is insane. <laughs> but they still have to deal with the societal consequences of being persons of color. Yeah. Sure. But, but then they can and that's, they can snap their fingers and send the secret. About. Then they can send the secret service at him with the snap of their fingers, <laughs> yes. which is a privilege most of us don't have. <laughs> but, but those no. are privileges versus capital P privilege. Yes, that yeah, that sure. exactly that exactly uh, is the difference. They they even have capital P privilege more because capital P privilege isn't just about your skin color; it's also about your class. Yes, but I'm talking about skin color and gender most specifically. Well, this is in my arguments. This is a thing which the the lefter people like to call intersectionality. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um. It's important to keep in mind that people do have different privilege in different ways, mm -hmm. which is basically all intersectionality is. It's a fancy word for that. When and oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh. I interrupted you. Well, no, that's okay. Go ahead. Check your privilege. Um, check sorry. your privilege. Jeez. Oh my god. <laughs> One of the things that I run into when I'm discussing this sort of stuff with you, in particular, is that you always tie it into the way that it sounds. And this is this is okay. This is going to sound horrible. I apologize, listeners. Um. You make it sound in a way that it's like, uh, it's kind of oppression olympics -y, like, oh, well, you're a woman, so you, you don't go to jail as often, mm -hmm. or all this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But it makes it seem like you're disregarding the experiences of people, the holistic experience of the person as their specific um, status in society. By pointing out, like, well, they don't go to they don't go to privilege as often. Wow, <laughs> they don't go to jail as often mm -hmm. because they're women, or they don't, um, they're more rich than this one white family, so therefore they they have this better thing going on, and we can erase. This is I'm yeah. I'm extrapolating. I don't think you're actually saying this. No, no, no. Uh, but we can erase all their other lacks of privilege because they're rich. I think that is literally what people are doing when they say all white people. Or all black people Y, or all men X, or all women Y. They are erasing individuals. They are reducing the holistic experience of being a person to your statistical group sucks in this particular way. Okay. I can see and what I you're saying. And, and it does for the individual, but it, it does for the individual with privilege. Because, it, it sucks because, for people without privilege, too. Because if I say all men scare the shit out of me, mm -hmm. that is something I can legitimately say as a woman because yeah. the vast majority of my experiences with men the people in this room are excluded mm -hmm. are fucking scary yeah no th there's a big difference between saying all men scare the shit out of me which is a fact about you and your experience in life and all men are violent predators but this returns to the previous argument i was trying to make and then again i got sidetracked of expecting people to always qualify their statements to make you feel better i expect everyone uh regardless of who they are to not be I don't want to term, use the term racist because it's not just a race thing. Paint with a wide brush. To not be stereotyping assholes. I don't care if you're a white person talking about black people or a black pe person talking about white people or anything. There's, there's just no excuse for saying all people are X. That's actually a matter of privilege. And the reason why is because it's emotional labor that a lot of people may not have the ability to go through because of their circumstances. It's like say, extra labor to type the word all. 
No, it's emotional labor. It's not just like actual, like, I can't type three letters, blah. It's the, I have to take a step back from the circumstances that have deeply hurt me Mm -hmm. to make sure I'm not hurting other people's feelings. And I have to go through all the emotional rigmarole to make sure that I'm being as open and as honest and as perfect as possible. When all I want to do is say, men have fucking hurt me. Okay. And you're expecting a lot from someone like a rape victim, for example, to say, um, you know, like make some post or something Mm -hmm. and they're coming out, they're doing all this stuff. They're like this, these are my feels and these are the things I'm experiencing and men are fucking awful. You're expecting that rape victim Mm -hmm. to qualify. Well, not all men are awful. Yeah. The thing is I I'm not actually expecting that because you take individual circumstances. If it is a rape victim talking about their experience, I'm not going to jump in while they're in. What's that? How do you know? If, say, for example, I'm going to get really, really personal here, guys. Woo. Um, Only if you're comfortable. No, it's fine. That's I prefaced it for the reader or for the listener's comfort. Um, say, for example, I post this meme on Facebook, and I'm really bad at coming up with memes, so I'm not going to try. That, And I preface it with, all men are fucking awful. And it has to deal with, like, something to do with rape or sexual assault or something like that. And you come and look at it, and you don't know me. I mean, or we're like tangential friends or something. And you say, well, fuck that person. How dare they make that judgment? I'm a rape victim. I'm not going to be like, well, how would it make all my men, all my male friends feel when I'm coming to this place where something has resonated with me? And wait a minute, I have to make sure I'm not hurting their feelings and all of this stuff. When all I want to do is say, I have been hurt. This is my experience. I want to share this and I want to share this experience that I have had in a way that makes me feel like I'm not alone. And you swan in (laughs) and go, well, not all men. Yeah. Or a worse version of Inyashi does that. So yeah, like, exactly. Sorry, I didn't mean to no, be like, and you, Inyash, have <laughs> no, no. come in and personally hurt me as a rape victim. No, that's not correct. So, like, I I know somebody who's raped by somebody who is Persian. Mm-hmm. And if she had said all Middle Easterners are pigs, she would have probably been rightly shit on for that. Mm-hmm. But, like, and then, you know, like, I've been the victim of, I've been, I've been physically assaulted by black people and white people. Mm-hmm. And if I were to say black people scared the shit out of me. I think people would be okay to call me out on that. Okay. Like, and just to be clear, they don't. Yeah. This was 10 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> um, but like, and I think if I count up the number of times I've been, I've been physically assaulted, it was more times by white people. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that's also a numbers game. But yeah. that, that aside. Um, Fort Collins is super white. Right. So uh, it's hard to, this is one of those things that like, I feel like I'm unable to get my head around it. Because, like, I might just be missing the piece of the machinery that people have when they it. So, like, but in this case, it's, like, I can see the hole where it is. Whereas, like, in other places, I can't. So I think it um, ties back to, like, the unfortunately phrase, punching up, not punching down. Because yeah. you, as a person of privilege in your race, for example, you say, black men fucking scare me. Even, if it, even Well, even if it was true for me, would, yeah. I, would I be called out for saying that? I think Pro- so. Probably. And because, I think so. Yeah. But, like... Because I, by I, saying that, you wouldn't be... Like, when I say all men scare me, I'm punching up. But black people... Some some men are black. Mm-hmm. Do those men scare you too? Yes. So... But not because they're black, but because they're male. So the sweeping statements that you make matter... Like, it matters what group you're sweeping? Yeah, kind of. Okay. I think that... Um, because... So I guess it's hard... Like, maybe I'm missing... Like, this is, this is what I was getting let at. Let me like, try to rephrase this, because I, I, I think I know what you're missing but I'm not quite sure if this is going to help or if I'm just going to confuse you further. You've interrupted me twice, but I'm I want to hear so what you're saying. I'm so sorry. No, no, go ahead. <laughs> um, but, okay. So, um, if I were to say all men scare me, that would be me as someone who has, again, this is going to be a numbers game kind of thing, but someone who is traditionally less privileged, saying that people in power frighten me. Sure. If I was to say black people scare me, I'm in a position of power over them due to my privilege of being white, that would be punching down. What if you said black men scare you who have privilege over you for... See, this This is why I don't like that numbers game. It's just mm-hmm. weird. So, like, you can you can miss... You can skip all this arithmetic and just say, don't paint with a wide brush mm-hmm. if you just don't do that, right? So... And, I, I, and what, I understand that. And, I like, in a perfect world, we wouldn't do that. But you're also talking to people... You're, you're basically telling victims how to behave. 
so to be clear, I think so I, I want to qualify one thing yeah. too because a lot of your examples are saying I feel this way, and that's and, that's me personally. Oh no, no, I for sure. That. And that and and I I I'm not the kind of guy. I've never gone onto someone's comment board and said not all men or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but like I don't. I imagine the people who would say your assessment of your feelings is wrong, and here's why, are probably smaller than the people. Like if someone says all men are rapists, and like they're not just the, you know. They're, they're, or kill all white men or whatever that hashtag that's going on a few years ago. And it's like, oh man, I'm a white guy. I don't want to get killed. Um, you know, I, I think I have a problem with that, uh, that hashtag. Um, th- so those people aren't saying like, hey, I've come from this hard spot and this is, you know, me talking about my feelings. They're, they're making it like more of like a policy statement rather than like an expression of their, of their internal feelings. And that's yep. like a, that's a very different ballpark. And I think that yeah. you're playing two different sports. So like. That's uh, like one, one's hockey and one's foosball or something sure and i think people i'm not sure which one's which in your metaphor but the <laughs> uh i think that telling somebody that they're feeling wrong is different than saying hey your policy uh your your, your proposed policy here is wrong yeah right? so and there you're right there is a difference there is a different experience in saying all men are rapists versus kill all men one is mm. a statement the other is a call to action right and like both, I think, well, so one one can be wrong and the other one can be just bad. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, th- I mean, those are true. But, like, to say um, I'm afraid, of, like, if, if, the, if the sweeping statement is inclusive, saying I feel this way, well, like, I can't tell you how to feel. Mm-hmm. And, like, you know, if someone said I'm, you know, I'm scared of all whatever, like, that sucks. I'm sorry. Like, mm-hmm. that's the only reply that you can have to that. Yeah. You might say, hey, if I can help, let me know. Um, I don't know, you know, whatever. But, like, the, the correct response to that is, like, compassion. Yeah. If, if someone's thing is like, uh, um, you know, again, all men are rapists. And so like me as a non-rapist would be like, I draw objection to that because I, I, my existence validates your, your position, your, your claim. Um, so, you know, there's also like the political move of like, how are you going to win hearts and minds by calling all your ally, your potential, not all of your potential allies, but the majority of your potential allies rapists. So like. Uh, or maybe not the majority. Well, maybe the majority. There's a lot of white people. At least people. half. Yeah. Oh, we're talking about white people or, or men or whatever. Man. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. hard to keep track. Um, <laughs> but like, if you're if you're gonna shit on all of them for the sake of the, like, uh, of the problematic subsector, um, you're you're not. I, I I guess it doesn't strike me as a politically savvy move. There's something that's kind of been bothering about this because I sort of agree with you, but I sort of don't. And I'm, I completely want to acknowledge that I, like I said, I think I'm missing something and I can get around to articulate what I think I'm missing in a second. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, being an ally isn't something, it's something that you personally choose to do. And I understand if you, if someone says like, if I were to say, fuck all men, I hate you all or whatever. Um, I would, and then still expect, Oh, how am I going to put this? It's not, I'm not putting this well. Um, here, go with your thought and I'll try to gather mine. I'd be happy just to give you the principle of charity if you want to hack your way through it and just say that. If you, oh, but I'd be happy to go with my thing, which was... Yeah, go with your thing and then I'll get back to my thing. So I think I'm like... The example that I, I came to a few years ago of realizing that I'm missing, like that I just, I literally can't get it is uh, when people, I met people who preferred non-gendered pronouns mm-hmm. and I'm like, well, how come? And they're like, oh, I don't like what comes with this. I don't feel like a she or a he. And I'm like, what does that even feel like? Well, so I was like, I think at first, I can't remember where my confusion came from, like, why not? Or what's that mean? But I came to realize that they have a sense of like their gender that I have no idea what they're talking about. Mm-hmm. I, I look inside for my gender and there's just, there's not even an empty box. There's not a box labeled gender in my brain. So I, my position is like, okay, you guys have a sense, you guys have an aspect of your sense of self that I do not have. So I'll just, I'll take your word for it and mm-hmm. l- let's do what you guys want. Um, so I'm wondering, so this isn't the same kind of like there, there, so there, I think there's running with the analogy of boxes in my brain. There is a box that has like, that's labeled like understanding of this kind of stuff. And it's just like dusty and full of spider webs. And I can't really figure out, I don't have a flashlight. So I, um, as someone who hates being male, I absolutely understand the non-gender people and why they want to do that because I dislike everything that comes with being categorized as male. And I would love to see a world where we didn't have genders and we didn't see people that way. But I can't be non-binary because I don't think it fucking matters. I can ask my friends to call me they, them, 
And sure, they'll do that to indulge me, but literally everyone in the world will still look at me and see a male, and I will still get all the stereotypes that come with being a male. So why would I put that extra burden on my friends for no advantage? I think your experience is different from theirs. I mean, it, pr- it probably is different uh, from a lot of people. Because I know quite a few but non-binary people, and they don't express their sense of gender and self in that particular fashion. Mm-hmm. And so for them, using like they, them, or Zaja, or all those other non-traditional pronouns makes it a different expression of experience than just hatred, just necessarily hatred for your current gender. Mm. So not to discount your experience, but to kind of elucidate other people's experience as well. Yeah. So back to what I was thinking of, because I think I finally gathered my thoughts. People who are less privileged, who are suffering, who are experiencing societal consequences for their intrinsic selves have zero obligation to pander to allies' feelings. That I think I can agree with that while still having my position that it's politically not savvy move. But um, the thing is, is as an ally, say, for example, I want to support people of color as a white female. And I have the privilege of being white and being able to have certain things in our society because of that. If a black woman came up to me and said, fuck you, whitey, I'd be like, okay, I'm still going to be an ally to people of color. But not to her. Uh, there's a difference between being friends and being allies, though. Yeah. Do you support freedom of free? S- freedom of freedom <laughs> of free? You sure do. Yeah, you support freedom of speech, even if it's fucking Fred Phelps out there saying burn the gays, right? Mm-hmm. So you can be an ally of freedom of speech without liking Phelps. Yeah, and yet, like, if enough people... Like, let's run to Fred Phelps' example. If enough Fred Phelpses told me to go fuck myself, like, you know what? Maybe this free speech thing isn't all, all, all I thought it was cracked up to be. Yeah. See, you know? I, I really like the free speech thing, which is how I always think of it. But I no longer think of myself as an ally with anyone. Well, I will I will work for principles. I am an ally to principles. And if that puts me on the same side as some people, great. But if not, fine, whatever. I'm working for the principles. And if they want to say, well, you're not an ally, I'm like, fuck you. I don't need your approval to continue pursuing these these principles that I wanted. To I think say. that's like what Vivian was saying, was that it, there's a difference between being friends with the person and an ally to their goals. Mm-hmm. I just, so I, you're, you're an ally. Saying, you're, you're, I find the word ally toxic now. And, I can, and I can saying understand that. things like, well, this person hurt my feelings because I am, oh, let me see, how am I going to phrase this? This is a thing that you have to phrase delicately, and I'm probably going to do it wrong, so yay. Um, saying... I don't want to be an ally to LGBTQ people because this one person was mean to me is the same as taking is a, is really hypocritical when you go in and say not all men. And I, I wasn't saying that it would be one person. No, I'm not saying, I'm not saying, I'm not oh, saying yeah. you, you guys yeah, are doing And this. you know, if somebody was whatever beaten up by mm-hmm. whatever group that they were previously working for, and then they're like, okay, you know what? I'm going to stop going to those marches because mm-hmm. I got my ass kicked the last two of them. Yeah. Then it's like, you can't really blame the person, yeah. yeah. But uh, in a general, I think the 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 response to like enough criticism from the side that you're trying to support is like, okay, well, if you you guys clearly don't want my help, it's kind of like the mm-hmm. the feeling that it's hard to avoid. And I, I'm not really speaking from experience because I sort of don't go outside. So <sighs> I want to um, I want to briefly talk about Scott Alexander here. When I first found out that he was not a feminist and actually anti-feminist, I was like. What the fuck is wrong? He's absolutely the sort of liberal, pro-equality sort of person that I would always assume as a feminist, right? And uh, it wasn't until much later that I realized it was because of his experiences being attacked by groups that call themselves feminists. And it, it's gotten to the point now where I, I am still pro-equality, but I also wouldn't call myself feminist anymore because of the types of people that have taken over that movement. And I've made it really unwelcoming and toxic to almost everyone. I'm feminist. So- I, I am feminist in principle. I am not feminist in being related to the political group. Which one? Exactly. And the thing the thing is, is you're, you're doing the same thing you kind of decry other people for doing. Okay. You're lumping. I am. I I am happy to say that I am pro women's rights without calling myself feminist because enough baggage comes with that word now that I don't want to be associated with it. For you and for your experience though. Yeah. And so you're saying that if I were to say I hate all men mm-hmm. from my experience would that be just as valid? 
as saying what as i don't saying, want to be labeled a feminist mm-hmm. because of all the experiences that i've had with feminists um yeah that's just saying i don't want to be labeled a feminist whereas opposed to i hate all men is actually you could say i hate all men that's fine that's just an expression of your opinion yeah it's, I it's keep the doing thing this, that like i statements when i should be doing non-i statements well no that's the thing i statements are fine yeah people, i know but it's for when this... people say all men are shitty those are you statements and those are the ones that are not necessarily yeah and fine. for the sake of the argument i should be using you statements i'm just really <laughs> bad at them <laughs> which which shows that you're not the archetypal archetypal example of the person who makes hey, i'm not gonna <laughs> high five you <laughs> damn high um, five <laughs> i don't want this room to leave without high fives okay, okay i'll, I'll high five you later no, no, i mean I'm, I'm just thinking like i don't want anyone to di- like be so miffed in disagreement here that mm-hmm. we can't still be super friendly afterwards yeah um or Fine, even super friends <laughs> so I, I, no, I just mean like I think that the, this is super not where I wanted the conversation to start and yeah. that's why we haven't even done the intro yet but oh. um, <laughs> so, uh, it, it's just worked out to where we were talking about this and it came up so because okay. um, I think that this is like it's hard the, the meta level I want to have this conversation at is like how do you have conversations like this mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, because uh I think we're doing a pretty good job. We're not. I think we're we not. Are. Used to have someone like Stephen in here to help us. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Who's not Steven, interested? We in just it. have to like carry oh. you around with us. <laughs> uh, well, and, and maybe on you know if if I I'm not really in this. I'm I'm more like interjecting rather than being part of it. So I've been in difficult conversations like this, and that's tougher. No, but what you're doing is you're um, doing this really interesting thing that I would like to see more people doing. That I see people doing poorly in conversations like this. What you're doing is you're saying I don't understand. Can you reframe that? Yeah, because well, really, because my goal is I want to understand, and so yeah. like I think you know one of the ingredients is to go in with an honest wanting to hear what your opponent, let, not just hear, but to really see where they're coming from. Mm-hmm. And by opponent, I mean like conversational partner. Yeah. Um, but uh, you know, she's got me tripped up about using the word interlocutor because apparently I I used that a lot earlier. That's no, a so. great word. <laughs> it is a good I, word. I hear oh. it a lot nowadays too. Oh, good. Yeah. Um, well, you can thank me for that. So. There's this really interesting article I read today by Ferret Steinmetz, who, if you're not familiar with him, he's an amazing blogger and an amazing author. Not a rationalist, but go look at him anyway. He's awesome. Mm -hmm. But he was writing about how there's a tendency to, and I'd have to pull this up or link it to like really get it right. So I apologize, Ferret, if I'm getting this wrong. (laughs) But um, to nowadays, there's this concept where we have to win arguments instead of have discussions. Mm -hmm. And especially on the internet, you go in, you wade in to like your friend's friends while where someone that said something stupid about abortion or something. And you're like, well, I'm going to win this argument and prove everyone that I'm right and get all the social points. And I'm going to come out the victor with all these like currency of social blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. And what really happens is you waste three hours of your time sitting on your friend's friend's Facebook while arguing with someone who is never going to listen to you, who is never going to change their mind. And you're just in your own echo, echo chamber screaming at the void. So I think... Uh, that's that's true. That's how people, many people, approach conversations, mm-hmm. and I feel like that's the wrong way to go about it. Agreed. But I, I don't think it's a new thing. I think we've been doing that since debate. So since like the ancient Greeks, at least, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and it's just yeah. louder when we have the internet and everyone can do it. Right. Yeah. And I guess the only thing, because I'm not a fan of like the debate format, where two people who will never change their minds get together and pretend to argue, but really when they're just like laying up, you know, they're laying out arguments, and the other person lays out other arguments, and they never really like go back and forth. Mm-hmm. Um, I watched a really annoying debate 10 years ago ish between Dinesh D'Souza and Peter Singer. Hmm. And it was super fucking annoying. First of all, D'Souza is a scummy arguer and I think a scummy person. Um, but uh, the whole time uh, it was about the problem of evil was po- supposed to be the point of the debate. Dinesh mm-hmm. was like pointing at like, Oh yeah, well singers utilitarianism leads into like, say it's okay to kill babies and uh, whatever other, you know, he says, you guys, you know, you guys should be giving way more money to the poor. And yet he doesn't live in poverty. So he's a hypocritic, you know, whatever. Um, the, the whole point was like, no, we're here to talk about the problem of evil. Let's, let's talk about that. And the entire like 90 minute debate, uh, Peter Singer was willing to grant that. Yes, sure. Humans, including babies deserve to die because for whatever original sin, I'm, I'll grant you that. But why did God kill all those animals in the flood? Mm-hmm. And he could, he, they spent 90 minutes dancing and Dinesh never addressed that point. So, like, I don't like debates for mainly that sort of reason. But the only reason that I can get behind them, and maybe this is the steel man of the person arguing on Facebook about abortion, is that, uh, like... By the way, that was me, like, two years ago, so... No, you're good. <laughs> to steel man your position two years ago on the internet is that it'd be one thing if you direct messaged that person and had that argument. Then it's kind of pointless. But if you're doing it on a conversation that other people can see, 
at the very least you might get somebody who like initially saw that and they're like, Oh man, you're right. Uh, whatever good pro argument pro choice or excuse me, pro whatever good anti-abortion argument they made that almost that's, that's kind of convincing me. And then they see someone else challenge it. You can, you could swing somebody back. Right. So I think um, that's what you should always do direct messages because you can actually have a interesting debate if no one, or dialogue if no one else is listening in. Anything that's done in a public forum, like a debate or a, a you know Facebook wall comment, is always done for the audience. Mm-hmm. I guess and it depends. That's why you're not going to change your position. Well, I guess it depends on are you are you expecting a conversation or are you just yeah that so that's the goal of the conversation at that point, right? If other Am people are to, watching, it's always done for them. So like there are people at CSU Which that come social. by every semester yeah. and scream about like how you're all fornicating sinners. Oh, those guys go to are hell. funny. I love them. So we invited um, I forget the guy's name. Uh, but we invited him to like the, I went to two of the Lyft meetups. They were called uh, Leaders in Free Thought. It was like the atheist group. But when I went there, the first thing I noticed that there are 32 people and thus 32 different versions of how they were atheists. Mm-hmm. Um, like they introduced themselves with like super, you know, long, so, you know, many syllable versions of philosophical positions of like basically how they're atheists. <laughs> um, so they didn't even agree on that. But we invited this guy to come talk about it. And in person, he was objectionable in what he said, but very polite. Mm-hmm. Um and I thought it was actually really valuable. Uh, and so he wasn't performing. But when he was performing, there are other people out there performing against him. Mm-hmm. And I thought that was valuable. So it depends on how you're modeling your 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 political your conversational opponent here. Yeah. Are are you are they performing or are they putting forward like, you know, hey, I've been thinking this lately. What do you guys think? Um, and if that like, could still be performance, but if they're being genuine, then you can you know respond on the wall, or you know they might be worth talking to via direct message, but. Uh, if, if they're not, if they're this reverend guy, I can't remember his name, uh, on his performance day, then he's not going to be forthcoming to like debate in private either. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think it's just knowing what kind of conversation you want to have slash expect to have before you get into it is my very long winded way of saying that point. Sorry. Well, and I think. I'm going to use Facebook as an example because I don't really interact on Twitter, so it's harder for me to say Twitter is like this. But um, on Facebook, you aren't really there, or at least I'm not particularly there, to have in-depth, complex conversations. I'm there to share cat memes and like randomly piss off any gosh but um <laughs> it's only happened once twice twice yeah oh I'm sorry um but when i do post things that are vaguely controversial on my wall i make it clear through how i model my behaviors and this is going to make me sound super holier than thou <laughs> that i expect mostly civil conversation i would like to think that everyone would like that but not everyone does every time i go to someone else's wall and they posted something like this or for goodness sake read the comments on any of the original posts it's like a morass of vitriol and grossness and i'm like how does anyone live like this like every time someone gets into an argument on my facebook page and they're really offensive or people that i eventually unfriend because i just can't handle them it's like every time i get the notification i flinch because i don't want to deal with that kind of behavior yeah. So then that makes sense. And mm-hmm. I mean, I, I wouldn't want that either. I was on Twitter like actively for two months and realized that it's impossible to have a nuanced conversation with 140 characters. So mm. um, I remember I was arguing with somebody about uh, female genital female genital mutilation versus male circumcision. Mm. And they were trying to make some argument like weighing the total utilons of men circumcised versus female circumcised. And that's how he kept putting it was female circumcision, which... I don't like, then again, you could use male genital mutilation, whatever. But the point is my shit still works, even though it's been slightly lopped off when I was a kid. There's a and that's, large that's what, difference in scale. That's what I was trying to convince to him. But it's really hard to do in 140 characters. So I kind of just gave up the platform. Uh, yeah. So I should get back into it and just follow people that I want to see what they have to write. But, I mean, I, I want to uh, say like breaking someone's nose is bad and breaking every bone in someone's legs is bad. But one is more bad than the other. And that's the argument I made. I was like, lopping off the last digit of your pinky is wor- is bad, and mm-hmm. no one should do that. Mm-hmm. But no one should top off your whole hand either. Yeah. And so um, but no, but the point was was that like uh, we were unable to come to a mutual, like, I don't remember how long this debate went on, probably most of an afternoon or something, back and forth. And, you know, nobody changed their minds or whatever. I was, you know... Uh, 
it's just it's hard to articulate a point in 140 characters mm-hmm. um and now whatever 280 but that's not enough like mm-hmm. in you know if they're not willing to sit down and read you know a couple paragraphs and they're not willing to really engage in conversation anyway so i guess twitter could be fun i guess that was my short history of twitter <laughs> for trying to use it for probably not intended purpose mm-hmm. i got onto it to coordinate at a conference and it was great for that so <laughs> um, and if i want to see what Neil deGrasse tyson's up to i'm sure it's a great thing for that too mm-hmm. um but the uh really quick back out scott alexander i think um just to, i want to just voice my thought on that even though it was 10 minutes ago um his whole uh not a feminist thing mm-hmm. sounds like not women's rights but it's not Mm-hmm. He just doesn't like the ist and everything that comes with it. Right. Um, and I think the since I mentioned as it exists. Right. And that's that's why that the reason I thought of that was because I mentioned Neil deGrasse Tyson and he likes he doesn't like atheist. He doesn't like any ist except scientist. Right. Um, and, you know, how how much that's true for him, really, who knows? But there's somebody out there who, you know, I think that that makes sense that when you say, yes, I made this, then people are allowed or not just allowed. They're expected basically that's the whole point of having a shorthand to bring all this baggage with and like oh so you believe all these things mm-hmm. and it's like i don't believe any of those things uh, i don't know why you would think that i'm you know i'm an atheist so i'm okay with killing babies or whatever right um so i guess i wanted so for people who aren't familiar with scott alexander he's not anti-women's rights no no <laughs> uh, not at he, all he's 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 way too articulate to uh to let that go so quickly too and there's a couple good posts on that that we can dig up if we want so yeah. um one of the things that's kind of bothering me about the not a feminist thing mm-hmm. is that I can only think of one person out of my like 600 social media followers that identifies as feminist who is an offensive person mm-hmm. who has said things like all men should die, blah, 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 whatever, mm-hmm. which means that if half of my friends are female statistically, mm-hmm. that's around 300 women, most of whom who I know identify as feminist are are being lumped in with the one person who is basically misusing the label. But that makes it seem like, to me, your argument is, well, that one person ruined the bunch, so all these other women who are feminists, I'm just not going to side with. No, it's... I, if they claim they're feminist. Yeah, no, I, I, again, I'm still siding with anyone who is fighting for women's rights and women's equality. It's the... the are we thinking about the same person right yes, now? Yes, we are. Okay, all right, yeah. When I went up to Michigan to visit um, my in-laws, I still identified as a feminist, and I was going to go to one of the conventions up there, and I got crap from the super conservative in-laws. And, like, I sat down and I schooled them, and I was like, no, this is why I'm a feminist, and really everyone should be. And they were like, oh, okay, well, all right, then. And they didn't say anything about it. I was like, oh, huh, that, that was kind of neat. And then a few years later, I dropped out as well. And I I think it's because when the people who speak up that way and are toxic that way, they do grab a hold of the movement and it can be hard to rest it back. The Everyone nowadays who thinks about the Catholic Church thinks basically pedophile priests, right? Because the entire church supported them and hid them and very few people said much against it. Even the laity after the whole scandal broke was like, well, okay, that was kind of shitty, but, well, what, what, what can we do? It was, there was no one saying, no, this does not represent us. And actually, now there are some people, and I've regained some respect for Catholics because of that, but the institution as a whole, I still find pretty corrupt. And it's a lot of that, well, okay, this person is going to the extreme, but they're, they're fighting for us ostensibly, so we're not going to say anything to them. I can think of plenty of people, to use that same person as an example, Mm -hmm. I can think of plenty of feminists who stood up to them. Oh, well, that's awesome. And there are plenty of feminists who say, say, okay, take for example, and this is something I kind of wanted to bring up Mm -hmm. as like an example. So, Mm -hmm. yay, opportunity. (laughs) Um, TERFs are trans-exclusionary radical feminists. Hold on. Uh, Trans-exclusionary radical feminists. They basically say that TERF. Yeah. So they're trans exclusionary. So that what they they're feminists, but not for trans women. Yes. This is going to be yeah. Basically, gotcha. they they yeah. It's it's literally one of the most horrible things I've heard in a while. Because I can my mental model of what I'm I don't know who this person you guys are talking about, but mental model of the extreme feminist. Mm-hmm. I could totally imagine saying you're not really one of us. Yeah. You didn't, have, you didn't go through what we went through. I'm making up again. These are not my positions. Mm-hmm. Make yeah. that perfectly clear. Yeah. I'm saying I have an accurate model of I think the kind of psycho. Pathic 
position that it takes to uh, hate on people that way. Mm -hmm. Okay. And this person in particular isn't a TERF, but I'm using TERFs as an example. Mm -hmm. There are people that stand up to them and say, this is not what feminism is. Mm -hmm. Um, This is horrible, and we should be able to include our trans sisters as well in our community and in our uprising. Mm -hmm. Um, But it's really a shame when we have people like that in the movement, we have feminists who are basically horrible people and for allies to say, well, this one person is a horrible person. So I'm not going to support this movement by lending my voice to that movement. I'm going to be over here doing my own thing for women's rights. Yay. Um, It's completely different. And it's, we need as many voices as we can get to help cover the voices that are not representative of the whole. And so when people are like, well, I'm not going to play anymore because my feelings got hurt. And I, I, you don't, you're not doing that. But that's kind of how it's coming across and how it's come across from other people as well. It's like, but we could build something together. And now you're refusing to because there's one bad apple. You and aren't I, really an ally. There's some organizations I won't support. and But feminism isn't an organization. The Catholic Church is an organization. Uh-huh. Feminism is not. It's well, no, it's, it's an not, ideology. It is an ideology, but when it embraces things like it is okay for women to say all men are violent, um, I'm I'm not okay with that. Mm-hmm. And and yeah, the turfs say that, but a lot of other people are like, you know, I, I don't support the turfs and their trans exclusionary thing, but yeah, they're allowed to say that all men are terrible and all men are violent. That that's punching up, so it's all right. And no, don't. I will fight for the the laws and the social attitude adjustments, I guess, that I would like to see in the world without having to identify with the people who say that I am terrible and they don't want me around. So I think if you don't want me around, that's fine. I won't be around. I think it's like, it's less like you're going to take your ball and go home and not play with them because they were mean or one person on the field is mean. It's like, you know what? I'm going to take my ball and go play somewhere else and not call it soccer because you guys are you guys playing soccer being dicks or so, you know, whatever, whatever mm-hmm. it is. Right. So you're behind the goals just, you can't get under the umbrella term. Right. And that's, I, I think I can see that. Yeah. But I think that I'm for free speech, but I'm not going to join Fred Phelps's church. Sure. I think that's a kind of a bad example. It's I mean, definitely his church is a lot worse. No, I'm sorry. Not a bad example, a bad comparison. Okay. Because people who are in support of free speech are not saying that you have to support everyone. Who's how am I saying this? Cause that's kind of not what I wanted to say. I'm sorry. Um, where you have, like, to be someone who supports free speech doesn't mean you have to agree with everything. Right. There's no party line. Well, the party line is that everyone can say what they want as long as it doesn't cross into yeah. actual violent threats. Yeah. And so there's no... The party line for feminism isn't, we hate all men, fuck you men. Mm -hmm. It's, we would like to be recognized as people. We would like to have the same rights as men. We would like to have the same privileges as men. Mm -hmm. And That's that's why I still support feminism, but not capital F feminists. Because a lot of those are people that attack people that I like. Even other women. And there there is, I, I, I was also exactly where you are right now a few years ago where i i called myself a feminist and now i call myself like still believing in feminism but not in the feminist movement because i feel like it has been hijacked enough that i cannot be part of that movement in good conscience mm. just jumping in i use the frames i use the phrase women's rights activist yeah because i mean then that's that shows exactly i guess activist is an ist word but that's kind of cheating mm-hmm. um but that, that says, oh, okay, I know what they're for, women's rights. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas, like, uh, you know, I remember, I don't know, a few months ago, someone asked me if I was an atheist, and I'm like, I gave the question some serious thought. Because, mm-hmm. like, yes, on paper, mm-hmm. do I believe in God? But I didn't know what else they assumed came with that label. Mm-hmm. And so, like, poisoning the well is a logical fallacy if used in some ways, but it's also a thing that actually happens. Mm-hmm. And if you feel like the well's been poisoned, and you're like, okay, well... I don't want to be branded in with those other atheists who keep whatever eating babies. I'm going to go ahead and, you know, call myself something else. (laughs) Non-believer maybe. That's why I would like to not be lumped in with men, but I can't not be. And I think that that's why it it makes sense that you're having not just you, but why you're able to articulate like 
the position of people who don't like the inclusive language there pretty well. Mm-hmm. Um, like I remember I was at a friend's house a few months ago when things were pretty rough and like they were talking, it was two people and they were talking about like how men suck mm. and you know, whatever. And I'm like, you know, man, hear me sitting quiet. Here's a guy with self-worth issues, you know, being told by two people I thought were friends that I suck, you know, great. I'll name you guys in my suicide note. Thanks a lot. Like, um, no, no, no. you, so, you are excluded. You are their one male friend. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually one of them was a guy too. Oh, okay. Um, so it's just like, uh, it, it's hard, especially if you're not in a position where, you know, you're able to just dispassionately engage it. Like, how do you, uh, well, how, how do you, you know, respond to somebody including you in, in, uh, slanderous ways that don't or not slanderous like bad labels that don't apply to you you mm-hmm. respond poorly mm-hmm. you don't like it mm-hmm. um it, it it hurts your feelings mm-hmm. and it's okay to say that like yes not everyone has to has to you know kowtow to your feelings all the time or whatever but like to the extent that you can and it doesn't take that much work you should um i get like if you're coming from a position of crisis or talking about a a, a, tra- a trauma or something yeah. then yeah you can voice your stuff but if you're having a casual conversation around coffee like you're not uh and assuming especially if it's a casual conversation you're not coming from one of those positions mm-hmm. you don't need to be shitting on everybody that you know you've never met mm-hmm. that's my that's my mm-hmm. two cents on it um granted i'm in a better place now i can have those conversations and i could before but it did sort of illuminate to me like oh man okay well principle of charity is giving your opponent like the whether they phrase something the right way or not giving them the best best interpretation that you can really think of or asking them what they mean right so that said this gave me some insight into like why people with tiki torches were marching with swastika flags Mm -hmm. it's like they've been told by people like um you know imagine being imagine being one of these guys and not obviously like every racist shitbag is marching with them but some people who aren't necessarily racist shitbags are marching with them and i think they get there because they're going through some shit and they go try and tell their friends about it. And half their friends are like, good, you deserve it. You white piece of shit. And the rest of their friends are like, oh man, well you can't be going through that. Cause you're a man. You shouldn't, you don't have those problems. And they're like, well, fuck me. These guys aren't telling me that shit. I'm going to go hang out with them. Mm-hmm. So like, I would actually argue that the, I would say that's maybe a point zero zero one percent of that group. And I'm, and I completely believe I'm yeah. totally willing to concede that I have, I don't, I'm not willing to put numbers on that, but I imagine there's somebody marching with them. Yeah. Like who's, who's there in the back with like a tiki torch from like target instead of Walmart. Because, because <laughs> yeah, because, because they found a group that wasn't putting them down. Yeah. And so like, I think it may, maybe more, it was probably started out with 0.01%, but I think that's how they accrued enough people to be able to swing the general election. Well, and that's the whole MRA thing, right? That's it's part of it. Yeah. yeah. With like the, I don't know my history of this very well, so I'm going to just kind of slide over that. But it's my impression, and again, not history, impression that a lot of this rose out of the, like, depths of the internet, where you do have those echo chambers that are telling you these things. And for and there is a tendency when you tell people who have privilege that they that their privilege is hurting other people for them to react in a knee-jerk fashion that says, well, fuck you. I think that is more of a tendency for people who are actively being hurt and shit on. It it doesn't, if your life okay. is miserable, it doesn't help you at all to be told, well, you have privilege, so suck it up. Okay, so I dated this guy in high school mm-hmm. who is probably Tiki Torched up by now, I'm sure. Yeah. But um, he was your 4chan kind of person, mm-hmm. your Reddit kind of person. Not like the good parts of Reddit, but like the rest of Reddit. <laughs> not, not, not like the slash the Bayesian conspiracy subreddit. Exactly. Right. <laughs> or animals being bros or wholesome memes or half <laughs> the other ones that I subscribe The deep to. depths of the Reddit continent that touch 4chan. <laughs> and he was one of those people. And so I, when I see people, when for example, when I look at Gamergate, I see him as one of those people online that's like, women shouldn't be involved with video games. Fuck you. How dare you even try to touch our video games? These aren't our things. These aren't your things to touch. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people out there like that. A lot. Mm -hmm. And he wasn't doing this because he was hurt. It's because he didn't want me playing with his toys. Can I make two quick points on that? Yes, please. So one is that I was having a conversation today about cultural appropriation. Mm -hmm. And I think that's kind of where gamers and the, the foaming at the mouth morons who are gamer gating yeah, uh we're coming from the same thing where they're like this is our stuff we got shot on this for decades now that it's cool you guys be part of it that's lame um so i i think that i can put a steel man on that very hollow straw man position that they're all they're, they're, i think let me rephrase that also i need to clarify that i 
do not sympathize with tiki torch wielding white supremacists. I think they're wrong. I'm sympathizing with the occasional person who probably wanders into the group to find somebody who won't tell them that they're a piece of shit. Um, but uh, the, I guess I'm my my mental model of the straw man or excuse me steel man position behind the people who were I don't really know what happened during Gamergate. Mm-hmm. Like I said, I don't get outside, and that means also I don't get online. Um, so uh, I guess. The idea that like oh now nerd cur- now nerd culture is cool so now you know I I endured swirlies through all of all of primary school but now that you know uh, there's a TV show Big Bang Theory and now nerds are cool you now now it's okay screw that you guys suck so I think that I made a I'm making a very vague comparison to the my vague understanding of cultural appropriation and saying maybe there's some common nodes there that that's not cultural appropriation no that's literally cultural appropriation no it's not though they're the totally same thing except that it's now white guys being appropriated no 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 okay no, so no, before no, we no, get bogged no. down by that <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna say from my understanding of yeah. what cultural appropriation is which we can talk about later if we feel like it i that's think a whole nother topic yeah that's all that's a whole nother that's like, fine episode. So, so so pushing past that i just wanted to say that if my understanding of like you're taking somebody who's been oppressed for doing something that the way that they've been doing stuff, and then as somebody from the outside, you're like, oh, I'm going to take this and make it my thing now, and then you're not suffering any of the penalties for it. If that's what cultural appropriation is, and that's what happened to these gamers, maybe whatever, not maybe not these gamers, but some gamers somewhere, hypothetically, maybe <laughs> past all that. What was the other thing I was going to say? Oh, about people. Um, so that's that's not Gamergate is sort of a totally different. Yeah. Well, it's sort of totally. It's not. To, the inciting incident is, at this point, I think, almost entirely superfluous. Someone got cheated on. There was a bad relationship. Whatever. It, what it is is an emotional reaction to literally what you're saying, that the, the, the gamers used to have their own culture and community, and now everyone can play games, and they're very mad about that. I disagree about that principle, though, because I grew up as a gamer. Yeah. But I was excluded because I was female. Okay. So does that mean that it's not my culture? That is a good question. Yeah, and, and I, I'm not like trying to say you're a gamer, gay, fucking. No, no, no. Well, I mean, that's the thing. I am very much pro cultural sharing, and I think 98 percent of cultural appropriation claims are bullshit. And and this isn't, for what it's worth, this is not cultural appropriation. That's a completely different thing. So, but it, the def, the definition is completely different, and it deals with other things that we aren't addressing, and we'd have to address in order to actually make that argument. Okay, and we should again, put that to another episode. day. Yeah. So, but. When I say, hey, you know, I want to, I want to have this thing that I've been doing all my life, that I've been enjoying all my life, and then someone comes up and says, hey, you're female, you don't get to have that. Mm -hmm. That is horrible. Mm -hmm. And that, and it's like, oh, I have this part of my culture and my part of my identity, but I'm not allowed to have that because I'm female. And because you with your tiki torches and your Pepe the Frog and what the fuck ever yeah. um, say that I can't, fuck you. And the thing is, is it's not just the the problem with this kind of discussion, not this particular discussion, but the discussion online about Gamergate is that it doesn't have any real life consequences for the people who claim they're being persecuted, the MRA people, the Gamergate people. But it does have real life consequences for the people that they're persecuting. I was on a panel at Worldcon in 2016 with Brianna Wu. Okay. We had police officers outside the door because of people that had done de- death threats, given like sent her death threats. Who was Brianna Wu? Um, she's one of the main players in Gamergate. Okay. So I opened the Gamergate can of worms without having read the label, <laughs> and I. <laughs> I, I you want to recan it now? <laughs> I don't. I don't want to. I want to let you finish your point. But that I was to, pretty I much be perfectly point. clear that everything I said about it came from my position of like I heard it was this video game related thing. So mm-hmm. that's that's. If anyone says it was actually about this, you piece of shit. And then I'm like, well, I didn't know that. I'm talking about something else then. So mm-hmm. scratch the whole label and just talk about the appropriation, quote unquote, of nerd culture. Maybe mm-hmm. is what I was more making a point about. And the thing is, is saying like, hey, I was hurt for this kind of stuff. And now you say it's cool. Yeah, that sucks. But there's also the opposite part of that coin that says, you know, I was picked on as a kid for this. But hey, you over there, you aren't being picked on for that. Can we talk about this? This is cool. I'm gonna go talk about Superman with that guy and not get punched on the face for it. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. And being able to look at stuff like that is awesome. We're having this like persecutory persecute. That's why I'm a huge fan of this cultural sharing yes. stuff. A uh, persecutory complex and says, well, you aren't allowed to have nice things because I wasn't allowed to have nice things at some point in yeah, my past. Yeah, that's bullshit, right? Yes. Yeah. But the people that are saying you're not allowed to have nice things because they're, they're the only things that I have and they're the only things that I'm going to hold on to with a death grip. Like, I'm still talking about Gamergate, so. Mm-hmm. But um, when they say, 
you as a woman cannot have these nice things that I've had all my life. Even though I was shunned for liking them earlier, I'm not shunned for liking them now and I have this huge community. Mm -hmm. That sucks. Especially when it turns into, I'm going to send bomb threats to your house. Yeah. Oh, that happens to Brianna Wu is what yeah. you're saying. Okay, yeah. And yeah, we no. had to have a freaking police officer outside our door at a convention. I agree 100% with everything yeah. you've said. Sorry, yeah. I, I think we're agreeing. I think I'm just ranting at this point. Okay, sometimes it's good to rant. <laughs> you got to get those things out. For sure. Yeah. That's think... why I have a blog. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why I'm here. Yeah. Um, so I think the other thing I was going to mention was you said that there was this, uh, it was a while ago that I got us on the, the video game thing, but... Um, you had said something about uh, like presence online or something ruining stuff or being so toxic. And I just, I had this sort of like realization a couple of weeks ago that, um, so I did this thing for mental masturbation for like trying to imagine counterpoints to like things I agree with mm -hmm. and what the world would look like if I was wrong. Um, or if I was one of the people that I disagreed with what their world looks like and what could change their mind. And so I was trying to imagine what it would be like to talk to somebody who's, to get political, a full-on, like, Donald Trump supporter. Not necessarily Republican, or I guess necessarily Republican, but not just every Republican, but, like, someone who's like, Donald Trump's awesome, and here's why. And, you know, all that shit that they're saying about him, all the shit that he said about himself, well, that's just all fake news, that's conspiracy, that's 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 uh, slander to try and, you know, diminish this awesome guy. Um, I was trying to picture what their worldview looked like. And to them, like, all of the, you know lame stream quote unquote previously mainstream media um that says yeah remember that time that you said grab him by the pussy and he said that you know it was locker room talk now he's saying he never said it so it's fake news um their their position is like yeah that that never happened you know whatever or the tape was doctored or something like that right um hypothetically whatever I, so i was trying to think of like i was trying to put myself in the position of someone who thinks that way um and then like all right well what could change their minds to make them like realize no a lot of this is propaganda um, that is making you believe what you believe. And a lot of the stuff that you say is propaganda actually isn't. So then I was, I had this kind of like moment where like my heartbeat went up and I was like, wait, how would I know if I was in that situation? Mm -hmm. <laughs> what if everything I believe is propaganda and you know, all the stuff that I don't believe is the actual truth. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I realized that the world would look a lot like it actually does in that, uh, you would get like, so the cool thing about being online is the anonymity. Mm -hmm. Um, one of the cool things, uh, quote unquote cool um <laughs> it has its perks but in, in situations like this you can be arguing as Are somebody is privileged to going online <laughs> uh <laughs> moving past that uh, as one of one of the things that you can do is say you're somebody you're not and so uh you know you get like leading up to the election you got a lot of stuff on on the internet that you'd come across in your news feed via facebook twitter whatever of stuff that just wasn't true from people that we've now learned well we learned two years ago but every intelligence agency in the world who's looked into this agrees like yes there are people there are people in russia mm -hmm. uh going online making accounts and retweeting or making up stuff grabbing pictures putting you know fake headlines over them and sending them along um these are these are actually people who exist doing just this sort of dis this misinformation campaign to sow disharmony mm -hmm. and uh i sort of realized that or i guess i i anticipated that this is probably happening on the left too. Mm -hmm. This isn't just in, this isn't just a uh, uh, fueling fire to the far right. This is also sowing disharmony on the left. Mm -hmm. And it's so like the number of people that you disagree with online that you see like, Oh, there's some idiot who, you know, thinks this absurd thing. I can't think of an example right off. Um, the shootings that just happened. There was a slew oh. of articles recently. There's been 18 mass shooting or 18, 18 school shootings uh, since the beginning of the year. And the number is nowhere cl close to that. And yet it got massively shared. I saw it like three or four different times, I think. And, and I bet the reason that it got shared is because then people who look into it for a second say, that's not true. This must all be bullshit. And so it's a great way to like make people question what they see and make people hard to unify. Well, no, it, it gets shared a lot because it tells people exactly what they want to hear. They're like, yes, this is horrible. We should ban all guns and do exactly what I've been proposing the whole time because look at how many school shootings there are. But I don't think it's necessarily just that, though. And yeah, well, think, it's yeah. also shocking, which helps. And I think it, it also speaks to the fear that other people have. Mm -hmm. So it's not just a, I'm going to share this to further my social agenda. It's the oh my goodness, I'm scared. Let yeah. me share this. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. But people don't bother. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, you're good. I think I just wanted to add to that that another consequence of that is that somebody on the right who is uh, you know looking at this and is pro gun, mm -hmm. and they say 
no way, man. It's like half that. Why are you lying? Maybe less, there's maybe there's more. Yeah. Half. So who knows? Yeah. Like maybe there's more bullshit to this than I thought. Mm-hmm. And it, it, it continues to deunify people. Mm-hmm. And so um, I imagine that like a lot of the insane stuff that you see coming, like, you know, I'm, I'm left of center, but there are like, there are insane circles of the left, but now I'm considering, or I was strongly considering, and then I had it confirmed a few days later that the circle is much smaller than I thought Mm -hmm. that there are people who, yes, on the left who believe weird stuff that I can't really get behind, but it's a, it's a smaller circle than I thought, despite what I've seen online, because the stuff I've seen online, uh, could be just trolls. It could be paid or bored people trying to just fuck with people. Mm -hmm. Um, but, or it could be one person, you know, with 10 accounts or whatever. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and then we were out to dinner and I saw that thing on your phone that was, uh, Ron, you some of the specific headlines. It was yeah. Oh, it was out of the Denver Post, I think, where it was talking about like these are all the tweets that have been archived that we've been able to access mm. out of the past. I think it was out of 2016 that can be directly tied to Colorado, like about things in Colorado from the Russian hackers. Mm-hmm. Hackers are they hackers? Mm, I don't know. Not I don't really. Think they're hackers. They're called. I think... they're called hackers but they're not yeah, doing they're not, what people think of as hacking yeah, but they are dumb. they're gaming the system well they're social hacking right okay yeah. yeah social engineering or whatever they call that but yeah. um so yeah one of the examples was uh like can you think of any right off um there was, was one about how trump got stuck in an elevator um what else was there because i remember actually seeing that on facebook in the during the election year um there was one about marijuana and it being like scary or something or like it not being as profitable and it was just like a bunch of stuff that like on the face of it, if you didn't look too deeply into it or if you didn't know more about the topic would seem real, mm-hmm. especially if it confirmed your underlying already established biases. Sure. And I think I, I remember skimming this, but it was a busy night and I can't remember mm-hmm. the specifics, but I want to post this full article to the website on this episode. But I can find a, it. a couple of them were um, specifically the kind of things that I imagined the far left people saying. Mm-hmm. And these are people just there just to just to stir the pot and sow disharmony and uh then like i said so it sort of confirmed my my suspicion that like oh i bet they're doing this for both sides or mm-hmm. they could be and this is exactly what it would look like and it was very gratifying to have it have it have my noticing something that it actually uh confirmed what i was thinking mm-hmm. within a few days so um, there's actually i agree with you and i read this article that i don't remember it was published and this is going to sound super sketch because i'm like so i read an article online <laughs> um but it was basically maybe it's the washington post or something where it was talking about like how the russian hackers slash scammers slash bots were targeting bernie sanders supporters during the election okay. through memes and through other stuff um and how they were trying to influence their like to polarize them to make it so that, and I actually, one of my friends is the case in point for this. He's very young. And so he was like, well, I saw this, all this stuff online that, that, that they said Hillary did. And um, Bernie Sanders is the best. So I'm just going to vote for Trump because Hillary's the worst. Oh, and it's damn. that kind of like, honest to goodness person, that kind of person that this social engineering is targeting. Yeah, for sure. I guess, the reason I brought that up is because both right and left social engineering, not yeah. just like it's not just the right people who are real stupid or are falling for all these tricks. It's everyone. We do, too. Yeah. And that's the realization that I had. That's why, like I said, when I was considering this possibility, I was like, oh, shit. And then I then I was like, oh, that actually happened. So that's sort of a drag. But it's at least allowed me to pull, like update to a much more peaceful worldview, mm-hmm. I guess, if you can call it that with, you know, people with malice intent trying to fuck us over. <laughs> but the fact that most of the people I actually want to ally with aren't. uh there isn't this giant pocket of insanity. Mm-hmm. There's a small pocket of insanity. Mm-hmm. And most of the giant part, the perceived giant part is, is much of it might be propaganda stuff. Mm-hmm. So um, the reason I bring that up is because you're mentioning like the online communities that were poisoning people or something. And there's some really good segue to that. Maybe if someone was listening to it. No, I, I wouldn't I, I, I just 4chan, like picking on 4chan. Yeah. Uh, it was something specific about that kind of thing. And I think that uh, it's, now it seems not just likely, but it's 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 shown that a lot of that bullshit that you know you see oh well, people online are all like this and that it's like well those people online aren't representative of people in fact they're they're deliberately trying to fuck with you mm-hmm. and for me it worked for a long time yeah and I mean it still will it's hard to like update everything in two days but um you know I'll be much more skeptical next time I see this crazy headline on some random subreddit or something and I'm like oh man. This is why I can't, you know, call myself a, a far left liberal or something. And be like, oh wait, no, this part, you know, it. 
these people might exist, but they're existing in smaller numbers mm-hmm. than what I'm saying or what I, what I previously thought. One of the things that I'm finding very heartening about that, that I'm trying to do myself and that I appreciate when people do for me is like, if I like just randomly shit post something or if I share a meme that I think is entertaining or that resonates with me somehow, I enjoy it when people say, you know, these are the facts related to this and this is why this meme isn't related. Um, instead of being antagonistic, they're like, Hey, so this is actually what happened. Like, I remember I shared this thing about Jack Kirby being told he needed to include more white people in Black Panther. And so he just put in KKK members that Black Panther beat up. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was funny. I'm like, this is actually pretty funny. Mm -hmm. I didn't bother to fact check it. And the, and the episodes, the issues of Black Panther where he does fight the KKK were not Jack Kirby episode or why do I keep saying episodes? It's so weird. Because we live in Netflix land. (laughs) Yeah. But, um, and so I was, it was actually more interesting to me to have that challenged and to be like, no, this is actually what happened. And I'm trying to inculcate in myself and in other people that tendency to question and to be like, no, this is actually the the facts or whatever. And so, for example, one of the things I've started doing since the election is looking at what my friends share and seeing what the URL is. Mm-hmm. So it's like, you know, hard times done that. I don't even, that just came up in my head. I know it's a website. I don't remember what if it's one of the websites that's untrustworthy it probably is daily news and buzzfeed are some of those bad ones yeah yeah and so if it's not like the washington post or the new york times and even then i'm kind of squirrely on it i'm like okay this is probably not actual decent reporting and it's probably meant to just like shit post Mm -hmm. so is this actually something i can trust as a verified source to represent me and what i actually intend to represent or is it me stirring the pot and saying you know i'm just spreading misinformation I think what it did for me was realized made me realize that I had to up the level of my skeptical game. Mm-hmm. And in a way that was actually, rather than like burdensome, was like uplifting. Yeah. Because I'm like, oh shit, far fewer of my neighbors are crazy than I thought, <laughs> was my conclusion. And I might be wrong, but mm-hmm. uh, I th- that's that's where I'm at right now. And it's actually a nice place to be. So mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I will try and, you know, stay vigilant. But uh, you know, again, it could be more than I thought. Maybe mm-hmm. none of them are Russian bots. Maybe every Russian bot lives in Texas and, you know, <laughs> they're all Americans, but um, <laughs> who knows? Uh, Deep cover. Yeah. An American <laughs> posing as a Russian, they've posing here, as an American. They've been here since the 60s. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, One of the things you brought up earlier that I kind of wanted to touch on because I like griping about my parents hmm. is um, the tendency of people who are more right than I am to believe to maybe be more gullible. And that's, it's not necessarily... What do you mean more politically a, right? Yeah, gotcha. more politically right. Sorry. Um, and it's a stereotype, but I think when it comes to people who tend to... And this is going to sound horrible. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to say it anyway. Okay. But um, people who are religious tend to be more gullible and they tend to be more further right usually. Well, being religious makes you more gullible because you have to be. It's a yeah. tenant of all religion that you have to accept some things on faith. Yeah. And so... Um, for example, <laughs> my parents are incredibly Catholic, like capital C Catholic, mm. all caps Catholic. Um, and we got into this argument the other day because I was like, um, today, actually, I had intended to try to find a march to march with the students and be like, we should have gun control and stop hurting mentally ill people and all this business. So I was telling my parents that offhandedly. And my dad's like, well, that's really stupid. And I'm like, oh, we're getting into this, are we? And he went off about how, how did he put it? Um, something along the lines of like, yes, we needed more gun control and no, he, that kid had no business having that weapon. And we, he's like, you're not going to believe me saying this, but we need more social scientists to study the issue of mental illness in America. And I'm like, okay, cool. Mm-hmm. And then he's like, but then, and he's probably, I hope he never listens to this because he'd be so mad at me. Mm-hmm. He says that he will not abide by the laws of gun control that are enacted because he doesn't feel they're fair to people who aren't crazy. Huh. I think that's a very common position. It is, right. but I know for a fact he has things in his house he should not be having legally. So, so that... And he's also crazy. So <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm joking. Oh, I am joking. Oh, oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so, that's we, a hard one. Yeah. Doing... Who makes the exceptions? How do we logically and with compassion say, we need to do these things as a society to make sure everyone's safe? Who makes the exceptions? I'll tell you who. I do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So catch me if you can. Yeah. yeah. I think well, like, he actually said that, by okay. the way. Um, the gun control issue is a can of worms, but I don't think that we're going to get any big policy changes from no. more more shootings. Like 
I'm not prepared to talk about it for five minutes, but the 30 second version is like, there are things that are easy to fix that people aren't willing to give ground on because they're worried that it's a slippery slope. Mm -hmm. It's like I went to a class where I I was, I, if I send off the paperwork to the sheriff, I can get a concealed carry permit. Mm -hmm. Um, and they mentioned probably five times how like the maximum, uh, clip limit or clip the, um, number of bullets you can put in a clip is like 12 or 15 or whatever it is now in Colorado yeah. because a few years ago it wasn't, but now it's less. Yeah. And they and get I'm like, real, real salty about they that. They do. And I, and I even like made the point of asking them like, if you can't do it in 12, whatever it is, 12 or 15 shots, then what do you hope to do in 16? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like what, yeah. what the hell are you imagining where if, if 15 isn't enough, one more is gonna make the difference. Mm-hmm. And they're like, it's, and they, they articulated that the point is, is that, we're worried that every inch that we seed could could be the one that starts the avalanche mm-hmm. and then we lose everything. So, like, there's a charitable position to view that from, assuming that you can twist yourself into a mindset where you can say, I can see why they want guns, mm-hmm. which I admit is hard. Well, um, but I'm I can, oh, No, you're good. But I, can, but I can see where they're coming from. So, like, uh, if you're worried about that, then, you know, like, super reasonable things like background checks at gun shows. Um, or, like, you know, if you sell me a gun and I go kill somebody with it, and you're liable. You mm-hmm. gave me the means. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, saying that that should be just standard, uh, I think it's less that I'm, I'm anticipating. I'm sure there's people who are really pro-gun and they're going to say that's an infringement for whatever reason. But I, I imagine that the bulk of the concern there is not about that particular issue. They might even agree. But they'd say, I don't think they'll stop there. I think they're going to keep going, and that's what I'm worried about. The bomb well, is coming for our guns. Yeah, that's the. Pro- I am moderately pro-gun, honestly, but I do think there should be a national computerized registry of all guns and who is their legal owner. And no one will ever give ground on that because they're like, well, Hitler made people register their guns and before he took the them away. God wins, whatever. And I'm like, yes, I guess he did, but this is actually a very good idea, and we should have it. Mm-hmm. So there's a couple of interesting points. You just that... agreed with Hitler. God oh. damn it. Well, I also like dogs. Oh, yeah, that's fair. German uh. shepherds, man. They're, they're cute. Sorry. Uh. Uh. Wait, the police like German shepherds. Are we on to something? Guys, grab your tinfoil hat. <laughs> so speaking Sorry. of that, I used to be a police dispatcher. And one of the things that I found very interesting is during my time doing that for the past 15 years was that um, at one point they had a... Uh, on like either it came with your driver's license or something when we got the records back when we'd run your driver's license on like a traffic stop or something it would say this person is a concealed carry holder mm-hmm. the state of colorado ruled that ruled that that was unconstitutional hmm. so now there's no way to track who has concealed carry permits uh i can falsify that and well say that. no not in like a law enforcement sense that's weird because as a private investigator which is way easier to get into mm-hmm. than law enforcement that comes up on your two dollar and 40 cent lexus search well yes but not like an immediate well, sorry i'm being unclear but when you're run for something like on a traffic stop okay so they, it ser- doesn't they do up. something less intense than yeah a, a detective would be database? able to tell or if you had like you know 30 minutes this is a five second you go to lexus nexus type in their name and get this information back okay. and yeah. it shows on the, one of the subheadings is concealed carry yes or no i think uh, she's um, protesting to the fact that they're not allowed to tell the cops in the field yeah by the way this guy has a concealed carry and i think permit. they do okay. have lexus nexus on their mdts now that's that's why i was surprised because yeah I think that's but like back in my day um <laughs> We would have to, we would tell people, we would tell not people, we would tell the officers, hey, this person's a concealed carry holder when they ran them. So they would just know. Right. And what you're saying is that whether or not that information still comes back, mm-hmm. you're not allowed to tell them. Well, no, it just doesn't come back anymore. I gotcha. That's interesting. Yeah. Well, at least and that, that's weird. By the, when, by the time you quit. Yeah. yeah. I could see that being useful information. All right. This is going to be totally an aside, but if you can't tell, we're kind of derailed anyway. <laughs> um, if I was a police officer, I would like to know the approximate probability of the person whose car I'm going to having a gun or not. Mm -hmm. Um, And yet, like, I think the number of people, and this could be a wrong statistic, maybe somebody knows, I think the number of people with concealed carry permits committing crimes is less than that of, like, the average police officer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, like, if anything, if they have a concealed carry permit, you're like, oh, this is probably a chill dude. Mm -hmm. They might be a gun in the car, but I'm probably good. Yeah. Um, So it might even be good Most officers aren't that, don't take that point of view, right? Well, no, they do. Oh, they do? No, some of them they do. They would feel more reassured if they knew the guy had a concealed carry permit? I can't speak for most officers not being one. Okay. So it's not necessarily fair, but I don't think that it necessarily upped their danger level. It just made them aware that there may be a gun, uh, maybe a weapon in the car, and that factored into their assessment of the overall situation. Okay. So, but that wasn't necessarily my point. My point was that it was taken away because it was ruled unconstitutional, 
by people that are like, well, you can't take our guns away. You can't track us. You can't do all this stuff. And it's like, but, but, but we really feel more safe if we knew who had the guns. Mm -hmm. And of course my father returning back to that part of the conversation was like, well, they keep selling AR 15s to drug dealers in Mexico. And so they're just going to keep coming across the border, which is where apparently everyone who has an AR 15 is getting. Oh, I was trying to figure out what the hell he was, where he was going with that. As opposed to Walmart down the street. As opposed to Walmart. I think you're saying that if they banned them, it wouldn't slow down the traffic, which is just not true. If they banned AR-15s, they would just go to the next semi-automatic rifle. It's it's a very common piece of machinery. And, like, yeah, you can get varieties of them, like you said, at Walmart or your local gun store. Yeah, there's... Mm -hmm. The the scary thing about rifles is that it's really easy to get good at shooting a rifle. Yeah. A few hours and you could shoot a target, uh, you know, 100 yards away with somewhat reliability. I'm not sure that's necessarily scary. Like, well, I think great. It's scary. If, if you practice anything, you should get better at it. And I would prefer people to have better aim. It's it's the firing indiscriminately into a crowd that I really have a problem with. I think, well, I guess the downside I was getting at is that it's with only an afternoon of training, you know, she could become a very successful mass shooter, <laughs> which I would like to think that it would be a hard barrier to, like, getting good, and it's not. With with zero <laughs> minutes of training, I could be a very <laughs> successful mass shooter. All I need is a large crowd of people. That's fair. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, if you're, if you're ambitious, all right, let's, 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 let's move there. Um, <laughs> if I'm an ambitious mass killer and oh I want to get God. only headshots. <laughs> which I uh, think the Vegas shooter was actually doing that. No, I'm pretty sure he just fired at the really? maximum rate of fire he oh, could get. Oh, maybe it's because yeah. he took out a security guard prior to that. Maybe that's oh, what I was oh, thinking. Oh. Yeah, I'm probably wrong on that. Don't quote me, and please don't put it as a meme on the internet. <laughs> that's okay. Sorry, There's one other thing that. I wanted to talk about. You which... you did want to know, like, what caused people to get offended? Mm. I think I have an idea of what causes people to get offended. What I'm curious about is, like, what that feels like from the inside. Because I'm pretty sure I've been offended. So this isn't one of those, oh, yeah. like, I've black boxes. Oh, yeah, I've seen you boxes. get offended. Right. But I'm curious, like, what the obligation is once one declares offense, mm-hmm. what someone else has to do. Or like, I guess really how we unpack that whole thing. And we can taboo offense if we get bogged down on it. Mm-hmm. So offense, yeah, can we, what, what is, like, to me, I guess being offended means that like, I found what you said to be emotionally repellent. Yeah. Is that fair? Or maybe what you said or did. So like your middle finger isn't, isn't something that you said, but if I you think give me not the bird, just emotionally repellent, but also an attack upon my person. Or or a group that I identify with. No. Something that's that not... is personally injur- injurious. Because I can find something offensive that's about, like, black people jokes. That's I true. I find that offensive. Okay. My yeah. go-to example is, like, re- you know, some religious people, and I'm not going to say all religious people because I'm not going to pay with a wide brush. <laughs> some religious people, is that punching up or down? I'm not, I don't care to look. It depends on the um, religion. So some, some, some Christians in the United States. Religious people uh, are the overwhelming majority in the world, so it's punching up. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm not, I'm, I refuse to punch up. I refuse to, I refuse to throw punches, um, <laughs> which is my privilege. Which is so, why you say some religious people. Yes. Actually, it is, but carry on. Yeah. Well, oh. and I'm, I'm, fine to, I'm fine to admit that, but yeah. I think that everyone has the privilege not to throw punches. But uh, in many cases, whatever. Moving back. Pu- pushing forward. Uh, there, <laughs> As he makes a fist and there, pushes it forward, there, literally. There, 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 thank you. There are religious objections to, like, uh, the existence of homosexuals. So, like, if I'm a religious person and or some reli- if I'm an example of some religious people and I see two gay people holding hands in the park, I'm offended by that. Yes. But they're not obligated to change their behavior because no. I'm offended. So, no. I guess, does offense matter? It does if you give a shit about what the other person thinks. So, like, but I mean... It, it matters as a warning sign. It's like yeah. if someone got offended, then you have noticed that they might do something to hurt, yeah. harm you. Well, there's that. But I mean, like, I could be offended at uh, uh, an inclusive sweeping gesture or sweeping attack at white people or men or something, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm not about to hurt anybody. No. It's just like it just hurts my feelings. Yeah. Um, but you, but... if you get offended like that often enough, you may do something like buy a tiki torch from Target. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> which is, <laughs> which um, does hurt people. For what it's worth, I have no idea if Target actually sells tiki torches. <laughs> I'm sure they got to. It's a standard piece of lawn furniture. <laughs> I do know that Tiki Torch Incorporated or whatever said that we didn't mean to like we're not we didn't sell them for them to use it for this reason. I thought it was. Uh, I thought it was a kind of a joke the first time I saw it, like people they, walking with tiki torches. Yeah. I thought it was a joke that they had to say that we didn't mean for that to happen, but there was an official statement released, apparently. Yeah. Um, so going back to offense. Yes. Uh, refocus. Mm. But um, Someone needs to keep us reined in. We can take turns. <laughs> yeah, it's going to have to take turns. Cause, uh, but um, I think that when someone is offended by something, it speaks to their moral and emotional stance. And it's like a... It's one of those... Was I, ta- I was talking to someone the other day about like how we as social animals 
have to no, it was something I was editing. Sorry. Um, how we as social animals have these responses that allow us to interact with each other and to understand how we relate to each other. And so when we say something offends us, it challenges what we, what our stance is and how we observe the world. And a lot of times when people say, I am offended by this thing, it's the, this thing contravenes how I feel the world should be. So I think I can get behind that definition, Mm -hmm. but I guess, what does that mean that like I'm supposed to do? So like if, um, if I'm holding hands with a guy in the park Mm -hmm. and somebody says that offends me, you should stop. I could just say politely, fuck you. Yeah. Um, or no, thank you or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like Um, they say that, like they go up to you in a park and they're like, you should stop holding hands because that's offended to me. And you just look at them like they're like a homeless person. You're like, no, thank you. (laughs) <laughs> or, I mean, you could even just do it, you know, I mean, yeah, however you want to do it. But like, mm-hmm. you could also say like, well, you're saying you're offended offends me or whatever. Mm-hmm. Let's just, let's just get in a circle until one of us runs out of breath. <laughs> um, but like, uh, if you said something or if I said something that offended you, mm-hmm. you said, whoa, Steven, uh, that, that Holocaust joke you just made was super insensitive. I'm offended. I'd mm-hmm. be like, oh shit, my bad. Yeah. Um, and I think that's appropriate among friends, but mm-hmm. like, uh, I guess not on everything, like. Uh, like if I said I was offended at hypothetically a version of you that used sweeping generalizations to say all men are rapists Mm -hmm. and I'm like, hold on, I'm offended. Are you obligated to change your behavior because of that? No. Right. So, but like, uh, but what if it's like somebody you respect saying that like a friend? So like Mm -hmm. I would change, I would stop telling, you know, racist jokes or something that offended people I was around, Mm -hmm. um, or people that I cared about, like my friends or anybody because I don't tell racist jokes, but, um, uh, the only racist joke I tell is what do you call a, what do you call a black person flying a plane? A pilot, you racist. Um, <laughs> so, As we uh, all wince before the punchline. <laughs> yes. And that, that, that's why I like that joke. Um, <laughs> actually, it was in Robin Hanson's great book uh, on the chapter on laughter uh, mm. in uh, The Elephant in the Brain. Nice. Um, and the whole point is that it courts danger, but then it safely moves back. And that's mm-hmm. why it's funny. Um, so... Uh, I guess, yeah. What is what is the appropriate response to offense? I think it depends. Because I think when people say, I am offended by this thing, they're depending on the social ties in order to change your behavior. So say we're going to use the random people in the park example again. I'm holding hands with my girlfriend in the park. We're walking around. This you know person comes up to me and says, that's really offensive. And I would evaluate instantly because this is what humans do. I'd look at this person and say, do I care what they think? Are they close enough to me in my social circle to influence how I'm, uh, how people interact with me? And do I have any investment in their opinions or feelings? If the answer is no, I'm going to say, fuck you and keep holding my girlfriend's hand and walk off. So it's like a constant evaluation of like the social standing between yourself and the other person, as well as how much their emotions and feelings and sensibilities mean to you. And also a lot of times people, uh, a lot of times always people take into account do i think that this person's off- offense is valid yeah like if if someone did get offended because i was holding hands with a guy or something i don't care if it's my mom really i mean i'd probably care a little bit because i like my mom i don't want to lose standing in her eyes i'm like hey mom let's have a conversation now mm-hmm. but um uh, ultimately my first impulse is like i am not going to apologize or change my behavior because i feel that your offense is invalid in this case mm-hmm. and I mean, that's that's a tricky line because that's just dictated by social norms, right? Mm-hmm. I think the other thing is like that depends on whether or not you stop too. It's going to like how is how important is the thing that I'm doing that's offending them to me? Mm-hmm. So if it's uh, um, like having a relationship with someone you love versus eating a hot dog. Yeah, yeah, sure. Or like maybe eating a hot dog really seductively for a joke, <laughs> and someone's like, "Hold on, that's that's you know, that you're making me uncomfortable for whatever reason." And or you're like, you know a hot what, dog this... around an Orthodox Jewish guy, or sure. a vegan, or, or a vegan, or like... someone who knows what goes in those things. Yeah. <laughs> everything, everything, but anyone the squeal. with good taste. So, <laughs> uh, um, wasn't that Oscar Mayer? Everything but the squeal. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, um, <gasps> including the hooves and snout and stuff like that, brain, eyes. Uh, that aside, um, as somebody who's eaten hot dogs, I'm, Thanks, I'm, I'm okay owning that. We, we so. all feel so like ready to eat hot dogs. I'm now. a one vegetarian. Person's, so. One person's listening to this and they're just like looking at the hot dog that they're about to take another bite of and they're like, fuck me. Um, <laughs> to you, no judgment. I, I've eaten hot dogs somewhat recently, probably. Anyway. Um, 
like if you don't care about like how funny that joke was or something, then you're not going to stand on principle and tell mm-hmm. the person to fuck off. So like you're weighing a lot of factors, but um, like, so like you said, you wouldn't stop if I said I was offended at, uh, or excuse me, the hypothetical, you wouldn't stop making sweeping generalizations about men. If I said I was offended about that, even if we're friends. So you like your stance on how important it is to make sweeping generalizations is more mm-hmm. important than like, not offending me slash possibly losing my friendship. I think it's the hypothetical me that's a bitch. Right. And I, that's what I mean. Because I, don't, I honestly don't know what kind of stuff you post yeah. on Facebook. So, yeah. Um, um, so I tend to preface things as has been obvious through the majority of this discussion with I feel and I statements. Mm-hmm. So I'm very unlikely to be like, well, all men are fucking stupid. Sure. Or whatever. But so that's why I'm having a hard time being like, yeah, because so if you were like, all you said, like I did this a while ago. Remember that Wonder Woman article? Uh, probably. So I posted a thing from uh, I don't remember when it was Huff Post or something about um, how it said dudes on the internet are getting offended by the Alamo Draft House's female only Wonder Woman viewing or something like that. Yeah, I remember that one. And I posted it because I was like, yeah, there are some people on the internet that are getting really pissed off about this. And I think it's fucking hilarious. Yeah. And other people took it to mean all men. Right. Because I was like, I'm a dude on the internet. By other people, you mean me. Yeah. Yeah. I was trying to be nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's okay. Before we make this personal, I think I can quickly paraphrase both sides. And you were saying, well, hey, I think it's a great idea. Why are yeah. you saying I don't like it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so that's why I don't like sweeping generalizations just mm-hmm. in general. You're Because you, 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 you immediately, you're guaranteed to paint people in the wrong box Mm -hmm. and And that particular one was kind of tricky because it was like you didn't write the headline no i didn't view the headline as all men because it didn't say all men are being stupid on the internet sure it was i read it as there's some dudes on the internet who being jerks and i thought it was hilarious so i shared it um but other people took it as all men are evil and no and that one seems like a a muddier example yeah it was if you if you wrote it and you use the word all then it'd be much clearer case Mm -hmm. so like um maybe i could pick a better different example so like i know vegetarians and vegans who are probably offended when i eat meat and i don't eat that much to be clear i guess it doesn't really matter i eat less than i used to <laughs> i was a vegetarian for a few years i eat meat very much before that as a vegetarian for like four years then fell off the wagon and i've been eating much less meat than i historically did for the last several years mm-hmm. and I st- i'm kind of like in the camp of like i'm doing better than i was mm-hmm. so it's better for the world mm-hmm. etc but um if i go out to lunch with somebody and they order a tofu plate and i order a chicken one um they're probably offended by my order, Do but you? like I've I've not yet met a vegan or a vegetarian that's actually been offended by someone else eating meat near them. Oh, I, think I imp- have a story, and I I, I think we <laughs> is both- it about the same person? Not the same person we were referencing earlier. Okay. Um. So I was in a class with a person, and for the for a particular reason for that class, we were we'd go around the room and say whether we had any like medical or anything kind of things going on. And so Seems super personal. What kind of class was this? Uh, I'll tell you later. Okay. <laughs> but um, it was, it was something where it was actually part. And so I, um, it was my turn. And I'm like, well, I'm intolerant of meat. It makes me very sick. So I won't be eating meat. And that's cool because I don't care. And this person sitting immediately next to me goes, I'm also intolerant of meat because meat is murder. <laughs> and I just kind of went head desk because I was like, Okay, and then then this person went on to say, and because of that, if you're eating meat, I refuse to sit near you or talk with you. Well, I know the kind of people you're talking about, and like, you, and to be fair, and so yeah, sorry. I, I, I'm yeah. sorry, I was pausing to let you talk. And dramatic I decided effect. not no, to no, talk. <laughs> there was a very dramatic pause, <laughs> and so later on, I was talking to this person. We were sitting and not eating and talking, and I had seen a recipe for something that was. Um, it was like stuffed bell peppers or something. I thought it looked really cool. It was like it was during Halloween. And so they were cut up, cut up like little um, jack-o'-lanterns. And so I showed this person the recipe. And I'm like, oh, this is really cute. We could do this with like vegan food. And they came to me two days later after not talking to me, saying that because there was chicken in the recipe, how dare I? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I completely phrased that to be like, we could substitute this as a vegan meal for you. But they found it offensive that I had shown them a recipe that mentioned using chicken mm-hmm. as an ingredient. That just blows my fucking mind. Yeah, like, it was weird. Th- that's one of those, I'm anticipating, I don't know this person, but like those like professional victims that they're going to find the smallest thing that they can get like upset about mm-hmm. and just go to the moon with it and stay there for two days until they're ready to talk to you again. And yeah. that, that like, and you couldn't have been more forth. Hey, let's do this. Like as a vegan meal. And they're like, yeah. oh my God, I saw the word chicken on that thing. And I was just so freaked out. I couldn't talk to you for half a week. That this, just... this person also, I had a discussion with them about one of their friends dying. And it took me five minutes to figure out the friend was a chicken. Oh my God. <laughs> that's <sucks>. like sobbing <laughs> discussion. 
And, you know, so this person sounds like either they're really upping their, like, you know, signaling their, like, how Mm -hmm. much they care, let the world know how much, you know, like, just to the highest extent that they can, or they've got some actual problems. That's a bummer. So I feel bad. I mean, to be fair, my mom grew up on a farm, and she actually was really upset when their, their family cow died after being in, you know... On their farm for, I don't know, 12, 13 years. This was a chicken she stole from a farm. I, I, I know who you're talking about. I remember okay. the story. I'm just <laughs> saying sometimes people can be upset about their pets dying. Yeah. My, my dad grew up on, my dad spent his summers on farms and uh, he doesn't eat chicken now because he fucking hates those things and they're dicks. And <laughs> he had to kill a bunch of them as a kid. And... Shouldn't he eat so, lots of okay. chicken then if so he hates refocusing, them? refocusing. Yes. Okay. Thank you. So... This person was offended by the fact that I... The, the point of this wrong arm building story was this person was offended by the fact that I'd shown them a recipe including chicken. But I do think most vegans are not like that. And so no, I hate most, to paint that broad brush. Yeah, I, I'm not talking about vegans in, in, in general. I'm talking about this particular person. Yeah. So vegans are cool. I like vegans, most of them, except for this person. So, yeah. But the reason I'm talking about this is because I had offended her. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, you know, I was like, well, this... I didn't mean to offend you and I really apologize for that. But in my, and I I actually did apologize and I was very sorry for it because it obviously hurt her feelings and I felt bad for doing so. But in the back of my mind, I'm like, I didn't mean to offend you. And it was something completely innocent for you to react in such a way seems very shocking to me. Yeah. And I think that's, that's, I don't know if that's a good example case just because this person sounds, even if they have all their ducks in a row, they seem, (laughs) they, they, they're from what I've heard so far, they behave as if they're not mentally stable. Mm-hmm. And but so, that's how like, people act on the internet. Mm-hmm. Well, that's that's another whole can of worms. I'm talking about people I know and re- real uh, people, not Russian real bots. Real people, okay. Um, so so everyone like listening. That, people yes. like that are just exhausting to be around. I don't want to yeah. be friends with them because it's so much effort to constantly police every single little thing you say or do in order to not offend them. And like, especially when they're ready to be offended so hard by so little. Mm-hmm. And so like, you know, I know vegans who, and imagine like, uh, I mean, if you're a... Peter Stinger style animal rights activist, you watch somebody order a burger and you have some knowledge of like the suffering that went into their plate and you're like, well, fuck. And you know, they don't necessarily know that the person ordered it or they know and they don't care or whatever. But you know, it, I think it makes sense to like not love the fact if you're vegan or vegetarian to like love the fact that eating, you're watching your friends eat meat. Cause like you, you kind of have a feel as to why you're not doing it. And, uh, they don't sympathize with that. So like they don't share that value. Mm -hmm. Um, But to be that blown away by it, I don't know if that's a good representative case. No, because I have another friend who's vegan who is amazing. Mm -hmm. And every time I'm a vegetarian, not on purpose, obviously. And so every time I have cheese or something around her, she's like, she doesn't say anything. But every time we go out, I'm like, hey, can we go out to this place? Does it have vegan stuff for you? Mm -hmm. Which is completely different than trying to figure out like how I had offended this person, you know? Yeah, I think, um, I guess maybe there isn't a quick, easy answer to this. I was just curious, like, what one's obligation was to say to someone who says, I'm offended? Um, Like, I mean, one answer is like, okay, sorry Mm -hmm. that you're offended. Not necessarily sorry for what I'm doing. Um, If if there's a conversation to be had there, like, hey, I'm offended because are you aware that, like, this coffee house that you're ordering this from, you know, employs, uh, you know, uh, whatever sweatshop labor etc or whatever mm-hmm. right um that could be like oh shit i didn't know that i'm gonna stop ordering from that place or whatever um so like there's fruitful ways to have the conversation but i guess i don't know like what one's obligation is to someone else's offense i, I don't guess think there nothing? is an obligation it's it's how you feel like you should respond to it like taking the coffee shop thing for example my parents hate starbucks because it apparently apparently donate money to planned parenthood i don't know if that's true or not but that's in the what war they on christmas mm-hmm. in the war on christmas actually they don't care about that they just care about the dead babies gotcha uh-huh. each cup of coffee supports one dead baby apparently oh hey, I'm, it's cool that they got a one-to-one ratio there i'm completely being facetious <laughs> starbucks is very popular dude i hate babies i'm gonna order a lot more starbucks <laughs> <laughs> but every time I visit with them, I bring Starbucks because I like Starbucks coffee and I don't care that they're offended by it because it's a, to me, a really stupid thing to be offended by. But they're my parents and so I don't, I I do code switch in other ways to not offend them. Mm -hmm. Like if I have someone in my life who I'm attracted to who's a different, uh, the same gender as myself or someone who's non-binary, I'm not going to call them up and be like, hey, so I totally had sex with so-and-so. And I hold hands with them, and I'm going to bring them up, and I'm going to make out with them in front of you. Um, that's not something I'm going to do, because 
I code switch in front of them to preserve their feelings in some ways. I've also never made out with anybody in front of my parents, but <laughs> that's uh, that's actually a good point. <laughs> but I but, but the rest have of your made point, out with someone in front of my parents. <laughs> but but your, but your point's taken, and I, I think like so. The general takeaway, just explaining to me like I'm an idiot alien because I don't get how people work. So that the general version is like, uh, I guess way the it's like you're not obligated to do anything if someone says I'm offended. Mm-hmm. What you, what you probably will do instinctually, and what you maybe should do, quote unquote should is think okay what should i or what should i update my behavior based on this information um how important is to me like the thing that i'm doing how offended do i think they actually are how much i think this will ruin our relationship or risk it Mm -hmm. um so like the weird thing is i don't think that if you know someone well doing something like that is really going to change your relationship all that much i mean not bringing starbucks won't change your relationship that much but like not telling your or like uh Say if you came out to your family that you're gay, mm-hmm. and they're like, "Well, that offends me because I'm a Christian or something," mm-hmm. um, then like you would have to change your behavior a lot to like correct mm-hmm. for that, right? Yeah. Well, I think I think the bigger effect for most of these things is because you're still gonna, for the most part, remain friends with people. Maybe you'll be slightly better friends. Maybe you'll be not as good friends. But things aren't going to change all that much. I think the bigger effect is that uh, how you respond to someone's offense signals which social group you are part of. And if you do are not offended by the correct things, and if you do not make the correct apologies when people are offended, you're like, you're saying, I am not part of this group in society that you think is important. Like, I am not a feminist, or I am not a men's rights activist, or I am not a whatever the group is that is, you know, that is being slighted, I suppose. I think, and I think that has a much bigger effect than just one-on-one relationships. I would disagree to a degree, but I think because I have something that I feel is trumps that a little bit. Okay. Um, so, for example, I was in a relationship with someone who made racist jokes. Mm. And I would tell that person, that's not funny. And they would laugh and be like, ah, it is. And I'm like, no, actually, that's really offensive. And I would prefer you didn't do that. And it made me think less of them. Because it was showing me that they didn't care about how other people felt. Hmm. And so it's or at kind least of, in that specific regard. In, in that specific regard. But it's like one of those, like, you know, you have this, like, high esteem of a person and it slowly drops. Hmm. Yeah. And that's, I guess that's the the social capital in your guys' relationship that he's mm-hmm. willing to pay to keep yeah. telling those jokes. Which mm-hmm. I, you know, to be fair, he probably wasn't, those jokes were probably super important to him. What he probably enjoyed was, like... In some ways, it's funny to watch some people be uncomfortable. Like that's why, like that's why, like that that joke I told earlier about the pilot was yeah. kind of funny for me, not for you. No, it and was it actually was pretty funny after the punchline. But because... beforehand, watching you guys get watching your faces be like, "What the <laughs> fuck is he doing?" <laughs> that's kind of funny. Um, yeah, that's fair. So, like, the only person in my life that I have a lot of contact with who uses the word "gay" pejoratively is my old roommate, who's gay, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and I never got around and i don't think it's worth bringing up like you know i don't like it when you use that word because like (laughs) he gets to use it i think yeah but it's like i don't i it's not my favorite word and uh, i'm sure he's going to convert to judaism too for the jokes (laughs) for the jokes (laughs) the seinfeld reference okay Um, i was i was giving them both a very odd look funny funny throwback the the dentist who converted to judaism in that show was brian cranston uh toads oh shit yeah okay guys got range as an actor yeah um so, uh, I would totally love to see all the like bros out there who, I, I don't think these exist anymore, but all the 12 years ago bros out there who were complaining about not being able to use gay as a word that means lame anymore. If they would have just hooked up with another dude for one night, I think, I think that'd be a, a, a price I'd be willing to pay. I'm like, all right, if you explore your sexuality enough to fuck another dude for one night, you're okay using gay for the next few years. However you want. <laughs> Speaking, <laughs> you're giving me this look like you don't think that's that's fair. I think okay. So what that's triggering for me, and I'm not being triggered by it, but okay, stupid, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, is the argument that all people who are homophobic in public are secretly gay? Oh, that's which not I, what I meant dislike. At all. No, I didn't. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't read it that way either. And I, that's what I was getting out of that. So that's why I was uh, making that face. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Right. Can I re re say what I think you were trying to say and mm-hmm. see if yeah. I had it right? You were saying that like. If you want to use this word, there's a cost to entry, and go for it. Okay. <laughs> yes. Okay, fair. Okay. fair. Um, speaking of, as long as we're way off topic. But uh, I actually wanted to go back to your old roommate. Oh, good. Okay, yeah. Because um, you said that him using gay in a way that, for example, people from 12 years ago would made you uncomfortable. 
Yeah, a little bit. Did it offend you? I don't. I so th- I'm not. I don't know if I'm ready to jump on that or like to remember that well enough or not. Yeah. I think because I'm also not sure, like if offense applies in a situation. Because I don't know if I can be offended on behalf of other people. Like you I didn't. Can? But it depends. No, I don't. I think he means he personally does not oh, have the okay. physical capability. Oh, oh yeah, I could barely be offended for myself. Like oh. I, yeah, I barely, yeah. Like for me to be offended on behalf of gay people because this one gay person using the word gay was like, mm. you know, I, I don't think that occurred to me. Okay, I, I was more just like I have this association that like jerks are the ones who use that word uh. that way, and you don't seem like a jerk, but you think you get licensed to use it. So it was just like, this weird dynamic that I had with mm. him and that word. Uh, well, it's like how I call myself queer. Yeah, Which I think is, it was a pejorative. Yeah. Oh, so it yeah, was pejorative, it was and it can't. Yeah. Well, and it can still be. If I mean anything's pejorative, if you put enough stank on it, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it was. There was a comedian who had that line about, uh, you know, Jew is both the like appropriate and pejorative word for a group of people on Earth, yeah. depending on how you say it. Mm-hmm. So I'm not sure what the the most political politically correct term is for somebody who's not straight, but you could use that in a pejorative way, right? Yeah, but it's not a particular. It's not using. Self-identifying is not necessarily politically correct. It's just whatever label works best for you. Sure. Okay. Oh yeah. No, I yeah. just I just meant like if if uh if someone's like I'm uh, uh I guess homosexual is that the most preferable term? Mm, it depends on the person. Yeah. On 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 a standard gay person, the most neutral term I think is yeah. that you just mean? used. Yes. Yeah. The standard gay person. I use that on purpose <laughs> to, to mean yeah. somebody to mean somebody. Who, I I think gay means guys who likes guys, right? Well, and see, and I used um, for a while. I went through a phase where I was using gay to describe persons who are not heterosexual. See, I always thought it was like a uh, um, lesbian, gay, uh, LGB, bi, trans, right? So lesbians and gays were uh, oh. same-sex people who liked the same sex, but not the same. They weren't themselves the same so sex as each other. So there's queer, intersex, lesbian, transgender, bisexual, asexual, gay, questioning, and like five other things. I was gonna say I saw the I saw the thirteen or sixteen character version of this on Wikipedia yeah. once and I thought it was too many. Yeah. Mm-hmm. At that point you guys So which is why a lot of people are going if they don't identify as one of the big four really, they go towards queer. And me being like the privileged person from the outside with like no vested interest in this like mm-hmm. other than like I want everyone to be happy. Yeah. But like no personal dog in the fight is uh which I hate that phrase, but mm-hmm. whatever skin in the fight, I don't know. Skin in the game. And that's the one. <laughs> um is like you know, go for the politically savvy move. If you don't, if you draw yourself into twenty six different boxes, then you've got twenty six different groups of people campaigning. Mm-hmm. And however small your group already was, that divided by twenty six yeah. is never going to stand a chance. So, well, and um, I think that um, the reason why a lot of us started using gay was because of how people were using it. Like, you have the far religious right that's like, "Those gays are sending us all to hell." Or like, "Yep, us gays are totally doing that." <laughs> Maybe his brother Jed was the guy at CSU. I forget his name, but yeah. I think they I think they used the word homosexuals, and that's yeah. that can't be like that's that's the textbook okay version kind yeah, of yeah it and is. So like again, how was brother Jed it? the crazy dude? Yeah, I think okay. it was, I, I think, think you're right. Name. I think that's his name. Yeah, it might very well be. Um, what you knew the same guy? Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. He, he was a presence on CSU's campus every semester. Oh, yeah, with um, his huge freaking sign and shouting and. Before we continue. We are right about our two hours. I don't think we're going to get to listener mail or rationalist picks this week, which is really unfortunate because we had some. All right. I can wrap this up in 90 seconds. Uh, Any closing remarks from anybody, I guess, other than like, thanks for having a good cultural conversation about a very difficult topic. Yeah. We didn't resort to name calling. That's pretty good. That's nice. I I feel happy about everyone in this room still. I never anticipated this resort to name calling. And if it did, I would have been very unpleasantly surprised. (laughs) So what is the topic we covered today? We never got around to it, so okay. <laughs> maybe we'll do it again another time. For the record, this was supposed to be Stephen's idea of like the tools, or I guess the elements of a good conversation, <laughs> and how to overcome some of like the the the, the tripping moments, like uh, like offense and uh, misinterpretation or something. And I wanted to talk about things like talk. You know, when you're arguing with somebody, you argue with their beliefs, not with them. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's oh, that stuff. never happens in real life. Yeah. But it can if you set it up right. Yeah. So um, yeah, all right. So that topic. Once again, we pushed off for another day, and this was just our fun... Uh, SJW in- interview. <laughs> no, no, not, not exactly. Oh, so for the um, record, I'm a social justice mage, not a warrior. I, I, think, I think what the conclusion I have drawn from today is I need a pocket Steven to follow me around. <laughs> yes, Because agreed. that really helped. Or sometimes if I get in, like, get in it with Steven, I need a pocket Vivian. I just need <laughs> a pocket neutral third party to be yeah. like, you guys are going around in circles and spinning your wheels. Let's step back and... Well, and I think that's really important for any kind of discussion, because... If you have two sides that are really getting vehement mm-hmm. about stuff, 
there's no real easy way to back out of it without losing face. Mm -hmm. And even though we're not like really losing face at all, it's easier when you have someone else who can be like, hey, so we were talking about this. Can we get back on that? Or Mm -hmm. I don't understand this. Can you explain it to me? And having someone say, I don't understand. Can you explain it to me? Is not only a really easy way to challenge like people making horrible jokes, but also a really easy way to stop the conversation and make people reconsider where they're going rather than just like rushing forward into like the knockout drag out kind of thing. And when you get in that death spiral, you don't notice. Yeah. You need someone on the outside to be like, hey, guys, you're in the death spiral. Mm -hmm. You're like, oh, thank you. Yeah. You can notice that a little bit with like just uh, that's where people like who are all into mindfulness training talk mm-hmm. about mm-hmm. and yeah. being vaguely into that myself. I, I I was having conversations like this earlier and that's kind of why it came up was like I noticed like, oh, we're arguing. That's not what I was going for. But just being able to like be meta about your own conversation, which actually be very distracting a lot of the time, but has its occasional use like in mm-hmm. that specific situation and probably no others. Um, <laughs> I'm totally going to try to keep a little mini Steven in my head from now on. Eh, good luck. To, I, I hope he's nice I don't know what <laughs> um, so yeah this wasn't quite what i was going for but it was a fun conversation i hope that you guys felt okay about it mm-hmm. so um so that's good uh in that case we don't have time for listener feedback we have time to thank a listener and our sound engineer kyle moore for constantly kicking ass and hey, kyle. making this random conversation in your guys's ears uh only sound bad because of the content not because of the the <laughs> audio yeah. sorry no no I'm, I'm teasing i think i think it was okay yeah I thought it was a good conversation, and oh my god, did I lose my list of listen? <gasps> so um, for today, we are thanking all our Patreon supporters. Yay! Thank you guys, you're awesome, and all of our listeners in general. Yeah, yeah, you know, that's true. I I hope that people occasionally enjoy listening to this. So yeah, that's, what, honestly, that's why I do it. You know what? We don't need to thank someone every single time. Every now and then we should thank all our listeners just for listening and being awesome, inviting us into your lives. And hey, maybe tell any friends if you find any of these interesting episodes interesting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And hit us up on the subreddit, mm-hmm. the uh, email, or the comment section on the website where we post this. Yeah. Reddit. <sighs> Reddit. What do you got against Reddit? Cause <laughs> I noticed when you said that you were like the 4chaners, the Redditors. I'm like, Reddit's great. No, Reddit is great. I just you, like yeah, I, I feel like you get the same impression of Reddit as I have of like the, the capital F feminist movement. Because I really <laughs> no, like Reddit. No, Reddit is actually really useful. I just don't go into it very often. There's lots of camps. Like I said, yeah. subreddit, wholesome memes, animals being bros, people being or humans being bros. There's a lot of very wholesome subreddits that, yeah. I, that I follow because I need a daily dose of lots of good news. In fact, there's one uplifting news. Yeah. <laughs> Which is actually kind of awesome because it gives me hope for humanity. Mm. So, yay, humanity. Yay. <laughs> um, so as our guest, did you want to plug anything? Like uh, a wonderful anthology about how awesome humans are? Oh, yeah, I do have one of those. So, I am Vivian Kaith. I am the editor of Humans Wanted. It is available on Amazon. And it is a pro-human science fiction anthology. Yay. Pro human science fiction. That sounds like a rare genre. It uh, well, that's why I did it actually, because there's a tendency in science fiction for people to be like, well, humans are like the the base class. No one really wants to be them. All these aliens are super cool. And there was a Tumblr post that um, I saw that the author of which allowed me to use it for the Kickstarter and subsequent anthology that was talking about how humans are useful. And I found that very endearing and engaging because I was like, well, you kind of are. I'd really like to see more of that. And so I was able to kickstart it and then publish it on Amazon. That's really cool. I didn't yeah. know anything about this. Oh. We shall talk more about it as soon as we get off the air. Okay. All cool. right. All right. Goodbye, everybody. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Vivian says, corporations are our Jews. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs>